Okay. Flavor on. You do. You do a Patrick Patrick Claiborne on. I've yep. heard of him. Birthday was yesterday. Actually, it's today, you know. That's too fine. That's too fine. I don't know. Actually. Actually. Let me tell you something about Patrick Claiborne. He was born yesterday. <laughs> I think says I think I think says private again. It always oh, says does, that. Oh, it does that. Kind of show your run here, picture. No, I don't. Whatever. I don't know why it shouldn't. It's probably something you did. No, it's not. It's something to do with YouTube, not me. I just worry that it's like I hope it's not preventing people from seeing it. No, I think I don't think so. I think people jump on when they jump on. Um, yeah. I sure thought of some witty little name to put on here. But I lack, wit, I lack wit, apparently, Mary. That's my problem. You I do. don't. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But in any case, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to warm up today, though. I think they're talking 60 degrees today. There could be some beer garden St. Patty's Day action for us today. I think there will be. Hopefully. I think there will be. I think we will. I think we will. So I warm up here. Anyway, all right. I guess we're ready. We're ready when yep. you are. No, I was just checking the settings on this. Oh, good. Morning, so Kelvin. So morning, so Scott. Out. Morning, Frank. Oh, hey, <laughs> Frank said, happy on? 196th birthday to Patrick Claiborne. And we were just talking about that because it's it's so debated when Claiborne... Well, I shouldn't say it's so... It's not as debated as it once was, but... Yeah. Um, like, Wikipedia used to say it was the 17th, and I noticed today they changed it to the 16th. Um, Craig Simons says it was uh, the 17th. The Claiborne Family Bible... Which is mother? Simon Rene. says the seventeenth. No, Simon says the sixteenth. Oh, he says Saint. He no, he said Saint Patrick's Eve. That's what I said. Uh, Ghost of <laughs> Howard's right arm. <laughs> Ghost it's of out there. I, well, I think I think I think you know the, the the thing about it though. We'll get into this once we warp a little bit. But I think the I think the issue is is people want Pat Claiborne born on St. Patty's Day because he's yep. Claiborne. But when you really get into Patrick Claiborne, we're going to do an episode of him this week. He was not the poor Irish farmer, Catholic farmer. Like, this is not Michael Corcoran we're talking about here. This yeah. is, is, you know, we'll talk about that, but he's, you know, you know, he's an he's an Anglo. And so yeah. and so I, I think we you said yesterday, you know, his birthday is likely on the 16th, which we call yeah. Saint Saint Practice Day around yeah. here with the drinking. But I think um and I think that comes from his mother, his, you know, his mom. Mm -hmm. His mother basically would, would have put it into the into the um into the family Bible. Uh Mary Ronane, mark correctly her name. How many screen yeah. marriage we get to deal with, you know? I don't know. He had a, Claiborne also had a lot of siblings too, because after his mother died, I think his father remarried yeah. and he had a lot of step siblings as well. Um so Calvin's on here, Scott, Frank, Barbara, Coast of Howard's right arm. Ryan's on here. Oh, dear God, my eyes are burning plastic leprechauns everywhere. Surprise, I'm surprised he's not a half. <laughs> Freedom Happen forever the right now. I thought he'd be in a fucking Jesus mode by now. That's okay. Anyway, oh, like his um, right. like when he talked about the Irish on, on our round table one night. That was a good time. That, that was, was a good, good time. That so that's, that's good though. But St. Patty's Day obviously is a big day, especially here in this city where we are. I'm um, having my one Guinness that I always have on St. Patrick's Day. I know, I know. It's it's definitely amateur hour in a lot of a lot of ways. And people, but mm -hmm. that, it's it's fun though. I mean, it, it's it is it's a fun you know here in Boston. It's called evacuation day, which is a fake holiday the city of Boston yeah. created so people in the city could have the day off and they can drink all day. And so that's always been a fun thing. But it's a good thing. I mean, like like we said before, there are more Irish people of Irish descent in this city than there are in all of Ireland, population wise. Mm -hmm. So so enjoy it. We, we you know, we talked a lot about that with the Irish Brigade episode a week or yeah. so ago. And as we transition next week into Claiborne, Mary, it's a different type of thing. I think you know, people talk about you know, Patrick Claiborne is the is the Michael Corker of the South, which is completely wrong. But it, it's a he's a fascinating study, primarily because of his background. Like we talk about Thomas Marr, we talk about about mm -hmm. um about Corcoran. These are guys who came who either exiled or left the country after the potato famine in the 1840s, came to the north. They were poor rural types, had to find their way. Versus Claiborne is a different animal altogether. Yeah. He, you know, and, and, and people don't you know realize, and, and you know Ryan knows this, but you know there are really three back then anyway, probably still now there are three distinct types of people in Ireland, right? There's, yep. there's the, the Ulster, Ulster Scots, 
the Scottish people. Yeah. You you've got the um you've got the upper class, which is basically the Anglo the Anglo Irish, which is where Claiborne was. Yeah. And you've got the, the rural farmers, which is the traditional Catholic type of people. Yeah. And, and that that's the difference. And to understand that is to understand what, what, where these guys all come from. Claiborne came from privilege. He he was mm-hmm. his father was a doctor. I mean, he, this this is not a guy without a pot to piss in here. Yeah. You know, he was somebody who who came from, you know, a, a good family. He lost his mother young. He was raised by his, basically a stepmother. Yeah. And, you know, and he, and they end up moving out here and he ends up going to Ohio. And, and it's funny because you talk about how history changes. If he liked Latin and Greek in his, in his prep school, he went to it blew it off how history might've changed for him. But he's a guy yeah. who, you know, he tried to get into, um tried to get into school, but he couldn't get into what's now the university of Dublin. Right. Yeah. And he couldn't get into it because he, he lacked the languages. And so he comes here and the rest is history. But we'll talk more about him later, but he's a fascinating guy, though, Patrick Claiborne. And the thing about Patrick Claiborne, which I, it's, he's, he's a lot like Rosecrans in a way yeah. where for some reason there are people who just blindly hate him. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's, I don't get it's, it. It, it's fascinating. And, and we saw a little bit about that on social media yesterday with, with with his birthday people talking about um you know talking specifically about i don't know i don't know if people think he's overrated i mean he tends to have a little bit of that joshua chamberlain at gettysburg thing yeah. going if franklin like he died it, you know he, he turned into something much bigger than he was um but somehow supporting claiborne kind of means it's kind of an affront to hood which is kind of like saying you like ireland so you don't like david Ireland, so you don't like Chamberlain. There are so many. There are so many weird things. With yeah, people, yeah. That's and that's people, like I saw you know? some stuff. It's like dude, it's his birthday today. Like, why do we need to be negative about it? Like, it's just. I was like, okay, like that's kind of a weird flex. But um, and Ryan mentions Claiborne is a member of the like like you said the Ang- yeah, yeah. Ang- Anglo Irish ascendancy of the Church of Ireland Anglican, which is Episcopalian in the U.S. And the others, I said, yeah, that's, that's right. But he, but there are people. There are people who think like they would, but. He was a poor Irish Catholic, just like yeah. Michael Corcoran or Thomas Marr, these guys who came over here with, you know, with with starving. And somehow, how could he possibly fight for the Confederacy against the Union when he saw how the British were oppressing his yeah. Irish people? And there are so many thing, friggin' thing wrong with it. I mean, if there was a TV show, people would bitch that he didn't have a beard. To be honest, that's how weird this the, ang- the anger got for that whole. Thing. That is so weird. Well, I know, I know, but but that but that's but that's the thing though is that is if you really get into the history and you really get to the, the, the nitty gritty with this stuff, yep. it's not that difficult to follow along. It's okay to have different opinions. That's what history is. Yeah. But I, but I find how people just hold on to these positions. And yesterday was a good sociological experiment with, with the Claiborne birthday because there are yep. people who came out and said actually it's tomorrow you know and it's like well not according to a lot of the stuff that we've read no there's only Um, one source that i found online that says it's the 17th everything else i found um was the 16th yeah and most people say the 16th and that's and his mother put it in the diary i'm gonna think that if you that if you um if you had a child you would know when the kid was born and it's probably i would think so after stepping on a Lego, it's the worst pain you'll ever have, I hear, right? Jesus. So, so for, the re- for, the, for the reality is that's how it is. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think people like who they like. I think, but, but when, when who, people came on to our book with Craig, book talk with Craig Simons a few months ago, we talked a lot about Claiborne because Stonewall the West, that was his book. I, I don't want to say it was an eye opener, but I think it surprised a lot of people about his attitude yeah. and about how his overlook was about the whole war. Yeah, and this is this was not a guy specifically who was fighting for the slavery thing. He wasn't fighting for this. That this is a guy who was fighting in his mind for his adopted home. And when people say that he should have been fighting for the North, uh, you know, because of, because of a million different reasons with slavery and oppression and all this other stuff, it, it just people don't realize like 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 Ryan said those three distinct, you know, the Anglo Irish, yeah. the, the, the Ulster Scots. And, and the Irish Catholics, there are three different types of, I don't want to what you call them, classes maybe, but they're, but depending on, on the group helps dictate a lot of where you come from. And yeah. Claiborne is just not, he's just, he's, he's not, he's not an Irish Catholic. He was by no means poor. He was very educated. He went to a private schools. Yeah. Um, he did very well in school. 
he ends up going to the to the military, the the the, uh, the foot soldiers, the infantry in England. Yeah. He does very very well. Uh, he he finds a kinship to the military, but he comes over here, and really he becomes part of that militia, and he becomes really piped into that Helena, Arkansas, uh, yeah. you know, so, uh, society. Whether it be the Freemasons, whether it be the militia, well, all the stuff he did, he was the man in Helena, right? Yeah, yeah. And and, and so he, he's got a lot of similar background to Joseph John Brown Gordon when he raised a six Alabama, very yeah. similar um, with the raccoon rough thing. But but he's he's a he's a fascinating guy. I, and I think when you, when you really get into him, we you know we play the whole what if thing, right? What a what if if he stayed in the North, because he would have been one, he, he would have hit that glass ceiling. There's no yep. question he would have. Right. Um, and, but he would have been a really, really, really good division commander probably in the West, but we'll talk about it. I want to, we'll, we'll, we'll do the episode next week. Oh, we'll, I'm, we'll I'm really looking it. forward to it. Anybody that hasn't read it, Stonewall the West by Craig Simons is honestly, it's one of the best biographies I've ever read. I was flipping through it again yesterday. I was trying to find the story about Claiborne and, and the snake and I couldn't find it. I found the story about him and his pet raccoon. Um, but Simons explains the Claiborne's attitude towards slavery very, very well, that he really didn't understand what they were fighting for. Like he thought that independence was so important to the South that they would be willing to just give all that up. And that's why he made his um, emancipation proposal. But then you right. have someone like Shot Pouch Walker, who's like, Oh no, we're not playing this game. <laughs> no, and that, that's and that's you know it's funny. It, it just goes to show the tunnel vision yep. that Patrick Claiborne had. You know, a thousand points yep. of light, stay the course. How are we going to do this? I see a, I see a problem. We ain't got enough men. So how yep. can we help remedy that? He writes this idea and it falls apart, and blows up in his face because he didn't understand the big picture, the politics, right? And that that's probably on him. But I think you know when you when you look at this, there's there's so many things. You know, we mentioned before about about supporting the South. Now, obviously, there were poor Irish Catholics who did support the South. You know, Cobb's Cobb's brigade there, right? Yeah, down in Georgia, twenty four Georgia, were made up a lot of guys who knew Thomas Marsman. Except by happenstance, they're both instead of going to New York City or Boston, yeah. went to Savannah. They went in the Savannah, ended up in the twenty four mm-hmm. Georgia, right? So that's so there were, there are people like that, but Claiborne wasn't one of them. No, no. And there's some there's some good comments here. Um, so Ryan says um, there were those Irish who made the CSA rebels are the Irish in the U.S. and the British Empire automatic support for any rebel. It gets really complex. And that's what I would like. You know, it's such a complex issue. I don't think like we'll never really fully understand what, you know, um, it, um, MJ said that this morning. Some of the comments on his her post about Claiborne said that he was a drunken officer, which I said that's hilarious because he stopped drinking in the 1850s after he nearly killed one of his friends. Um, and then I think Gentilly answered this question for Ryan, but Ryan asked Mars' friend who was in the Young Ireland movement with him, John both Mitchell. exiled to uh, John Mitchell. Okay, yeah. John Mitchell. Yeah. But the thing, but but that's the stereotype though is, is true, and that's the that's the drunken Irish stereotype, yeah. right? And that's what it is. I mean, again. We're sitting in a city here which embodies a drunken Irish stereotype. I mean, this is yeah. why I don't go to Boston anymore. No, I would not. I would, I've never been into Boston on St. Patrick's Day. No, I, I mean, it's say, fun, but I'm quite content. Every, not to go everybody Boston. you meet in Boston today is Tommy Gavin. Everybody, right? And that's because you 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 have this 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 stereotype. And again, this is and this is also the Irish dudes, the people who still have the accents, and still you know, who support it, but they 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 they, they like the lifestyle. Yeah, but um, but. There's so many, there are so many things. We've said this a million times. In the Northern Army, one of every four Union officers and soldiers yeah. was foreign, right? A lot of Irish, a lot of German, but they fought for different reasons. You know, I mentioned before, Thomas Marr initially, he, he took a shine of the Confederacy because the whole the rebel thing. Well, they, Mitchell they fought for the Confederacy. Mitch, That's Mitchell did, right? But again, when you're looking at how the whole thing goes, it all goes back to box, right? Economics. Yeah. You're sitting in New York City, and you're a dock worker, or you're digging ditches, or you're a Yankee. All the shitty jobs in New York City, right? You, you, you're competing with, with other people, and you have, you have the idea of freed slaves coming in to steal your jobs. At the end of the day, politics is politics, but you want to put food on the table. I mean, that's the whole. You can sit there and sit there and drink your beers at the bars and complain about modern day politics all you want, but really, 
whoever the president is, if you're going to check in the mail for a couple hundred bucks for mm-hmm. the hell of it, hey, well, you know, it, it, it's yeah. what who fills your pockets. And that's what they cared about. You're going to feed your families, right? Yeah. And so when you have some of these Irish Brigade guys coming back after Gettysburg, you know, guys, the 69th, 88th, right, to fight the, the draft riots in New York mm-hmm. City against their own brethren, this is where it gets complicated. Yeah. Right. And and the, that's why the Democrats, Tammany Hall, all these people help gravitate towards them because the enemy of your enemy is your friend. And they vote, yep. they represented a huge voting block of New York City. Um, and it, 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 it's it's cool how all these things tie together. Right. How the Irish the Irish Brigade, how it ties in a obviously Antietam, Fredericksburg, a little bit of Gettysburg, but yeah. how it tails into the draft riots and how it goes from there. And how it kind of takes off from there later on. Yeah. 1963, John F. Kennedy prevents a ba- gives a battle flag to the Irish Brigade in Ireland. Mm-hmm. Um, first Irish Catholic president. So it's important. It certainly is important, but it's uh it, it's the the Irish, the Irish in the Civil War is definitely a a field of study where the more you go into it, it's like an onion, right? Yeah. It's 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 very, very complicated with many, many layers. And that's why when you see people talk about drunken Claiborne or why would the Irish yeah. fight the Confederacy. Um, that, that's, that's, they're at the top level of the onion. They haven't yeah. got too deep in yet. No, no. And that's the thing. It's like, if you, re, if you find, when you, when you find out why Claiborne stopped drinking, one of the reasons was because it made him angry. His friend went to, I don't know if it was him. Was it Hinman who woke him up to make sure he was okay? And then like Claiborne, like went off on him, like almost killed him. Yeah. Th- Thomas Hinman, we'll, we're going to talk about him because he, Party he's boy. A, yeah, he's, he's a fascinating guy. He was, you know, he, he was, he was someone who liked like the fast life he like he was a good looking guy he was little though he was short you know yeah. uh but he 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 was definitely the, the the one who um who helped get get claiborne in a lot of trouble yeah you know but again the other thing we talked about the irish brigade last week too was was the politics from washington where abraham lincoln the guy with the, the hat right yeah they were they're okay with irish soldiers an irish brigade makes them a little itchy we can't have an Irish man running them there. Yeah. Well, Ryan right. just we, mentions Shields, who we well, talked James about Shields. in our episode. Now he's an Irish guy born like, but he leaves the United States, but he leaves for the U.S. before the potato famine. He's not part of the whole thing. He's Irish, but like we say about last week, he's a wash ashore, right? We call yeah. him here. He's uh, he's a uh, he, he's more Americanized in, the, in the, yeah. the eyes of a lot of people in Irish, and he has that whole crew where he goes. Yeah, Thomas Marr is a pretty popular guy. So how about this? I'll be a division commander. Marr can be the brigade commander. So he still reports to me, but he still satisfies all the troops of the New Yorkers and the Massachusetts guys. And then Lincoln kind of sighs and goes, fine. So he, he gives himself yeah. a promotion. Um, and Shields is the guy who was going to duel Lincoln at Springfield, Mary. Yeah, and I think that's why he got the promotion was because Lincoln was really embarrassed by that whole situation. Like, I think I told the story, I know I mentioned it last when we did our live last week, but there was one guy who asked Lincoln about Shields one time and Lincoln was like, yeah, it happened. And by the way, don't ever mention it again. Or I'm going to like, he he just didn't <coughs> like to talk about it because he was so embarrassed about it. I mean, he's writing, he's trying to do the whole silence, do a good thing. He's writing yeah. letters. Um, and Mary's helping him with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, another Mary. But, but, but that, but yeah, that, that it's, it's fun. It reminds me a lot of, of James Walker trying to duel Stonewall Jackson at yeah. EMI. And he ends up taking on the Stonewall Brigade. That's what's cool about history is some of these connections with these people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the, the whole Irish in the, the U.S. is interesting. Like Simmons had the statistic in his book that Claiborne was one of 2 million I- Irish people that immigrated to the U.S. in the 1850s. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Miranda says shield challenged Lincoln because Ava and Mary were writing some, yeah, the, the whole, he did the whole silence, do good yeah. thing. But and he, got, he, got, he got his ass, he got his he got his ass, 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 ass handed to him. You know, not the first guy to challenge an Irish guy and get threatened to be killed, but no. yeah, but but that's um, but that's <laughs> it's freaking cool. You know what's so funny? Go honest Abe, right? He's honest Abe. Why is he never had a fake name? I'm not saying, just saying that, just saying. No, it, it, well, it's I know. I'm just, speaking and speaking of Lincoln, we do have to talk about manhunt. Oh, we'll get to that a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. A but bit. yeah, we, yeah, our next episode is going to be Clayburn, which we're both looking forward to to recording. I put the name of the Simmons bio in there. Stonewall the West. There's another smaller book which is about Claiborne's last days. It actually is an account of Claiborne by Fremantle. Yeah. Which is really cool to read. Fremantle um, 
wrote about him in his diary in this book that I have has that account oh, of it. And then love Arthur Fremantle. And then there's the um and then there's the the graphic novel. The graphic novel has some really good quotes about Claiborne, one of them from John Bell Hood. John Bell Hood admired him. And that's something that doesn't get mentioned a lot by the Hood people is this admiration that John Bell Hood had for Patrick Claiborne. Um this morning I when I was searching for um Patrick Claiborne's just to see how many sites said 16th for his birthday and how many said 17th. The Google search said um, um, how did Patrick Claiborne die? And I instantly poured out John Bell Hood. God, I know somebody would lose his freaking mind if you said that. <laughs> no, I was like, but but yeah, the Irish, the Irish Brigade. I mean, it's it's you know, it's a fascinating study when you look at this. It all starts with the 69th New York, the the, the, the fighting Irish, right? Yeah. Uh, and it goes from there, and you, you, you pick it up the 63rd, eventually the 88th. Um, they fuck up a little bit. They bring in the, the 29th Massachusetts instead of the yeah. 28th. They bring him in, and eventually the 116th PA comes in. But you know, it's, it's funny because you know you, we were talking before about how they were kind of like the the front line. I don't want to say they were like the dogs, right? They were yeah. they were always thrown in. And you look at how much their how much their number dropped from 1862 to 63. Well, they literally went from 4,000 men till Gettysburg to get 350 guys left. That's all they had. Yeah. And so when, when you're looking at when you're looking at Gettysburg, for example, Patrick Kelly's commanding at that point, you look at guys like uh, the 69th has two companies left, 63rd, two companies left, 116th PA has four companies left. Now remember, these are guys fighting with smooth bores. And they're in, you know, uh, they're in George Rose's 28-acre wheat fields fighting. G.T. Anderson, or you know, all these people coming across and wave after wave with these short range guns. Yeah. And they said they went through, they fought so hard, the Irish Brigade, which was a name only because they were down to a couple hundred guys, ran out of ammunition in 20 minutes. That's how hard they fought. Uh, they got that beautiful monument there over in Gettysburg, but they but their numbers really dropped. And at that point, they were kind of a name only. They kind of got spread out. Yeah. But they were really overused. They were thrown in. Um, a lot of the green soldiers, the 116 Pennsylvania came in pretty much right before Fredericksburg and got thrown right into it and it grinds it up. Uh, you look at some of the casualty numbers from Fredericksburg. Uh, it's just, it's just appalling how these guys were kind of used. They really, really were. Uh, and then, you know, Thomas Marr ends up leaving, quitting. Yeah. He gets, he gets, he gets sent out, out West for a while, ends up in Montana. And of course he pisses off somebody and somebody puts a hit on him and he dumps him in the Jeez. river and drowns. It. It's, 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 it's yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows what really happens with this? But but it really, when you study the Irish Brigade in really detail, you they they couldn't really recruit because original men from the 69th New York after Bull Run were told don't sign up. Yeah, they're going back to New York City saying, unless you're an officer, don't do it because yeah. it's not worth it. And so they couldn't. They had a real tough time recruiting. We talked about. Mars is he's you know he's challenged to get two thousand men for this brigade. He comes up with like two hundred and fifty guys. Nobody wants to do it. The word around town is don't sign up. And Lincoln, Washington, makes no effort. You know, we we talk about after Fredericksburg, before the mud march, that whole thing, where they're sitting at winter camp and they're, they're getting no support to recruit. The morale is at an all time low. He has that big St. Patty's Day party. Which was yeah. a, which is a big big deal, which really helps their morale. The existing guys. That's that's such an they're... awesome story. That St. Patrick's Day party is such a cool story. Um, there's a, Richard is on here. Um, he mentions that the first member first member of my mom's family came to the U.S. and served in the 116th PA. Um, and then Ryan mentions a couple other Irish brigades, um, the 23rd Illinois and the 30th Missouri. Yeah, and you know Corcoran has Corcoran's Legion which yep. is kind of like a, a different type of wing. They weren't the Irish Brigade per se, but speaking, you talk about this, you, you talk about the traditional Irish Brigade, 69th, 63rd, 88th New York, 28th Mass, 116th yep. PA, with the 29th Massachusetts being out in the wings that they disappear. But you're right, there were other ones that fell, fell into it as well. And there were a lot of, there was thousands and thousands of Irish speckled into different brigades too. We make fun yep. of old Buster, right? Buster yep. was in the 20th, 20th Maine. Gentilly's favorite. It was, but but that's the thing is they all had Irish, especially especially people from Massachusetts, um, people from New York, uh, Philadelphia with the big three, but even even out in Illinois. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they, the twenty third and the Miranda of, on, the con, on the Confederate side, the thirty third Virginia Company E, the Emerald Guards. Yeah, so you had you had a lot of, of where they came from, so they definitely were represented. Uh, yeah, but the Irish Brigade, as we call it, as people know them, 
uh, were really were really run from the beat grinder. They really, really were, and they fought like freaking hell. Oh, and yeah. they choose they chose to use those smooth boards. That's what they wanted to fight with. And it's great from 20, 30 yards out, but outside of that, they're you know they're five hundred yards away from the sunken road and Tatum getting picked off, ping, 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 you know, by the Confederates, and they couldn't fire back because they didn't have any range. Yeah, the they, ghost the ghost of Howard's right arm says it was a short range war. The rifle barrel didn't matter at all. If you start in front of a company firing, if you stand in front of a company firing buck and ball, you better plan a wake. And that exactly. Yeah. And you, you talk about the fact that a lot of those flags got shredded in Antietam. They had they had to put the uh, the boxwood sprigs in their in their cappies when they went to Fredericksburg because the, their flags were gone. They were they yeah. were ripped apart, they were shot to hell, and they were in New York City being repaired. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's that's uh, that's the thing. And it was always fascinating to me, you know, how Michael Corcoran and Thomas Marr both died near deaths considering how hard they fought, right? Mm -hmm. Corcoran falls off his horse outside of Fairfax, probably gentilly related, probably, but he did something. So goddamn <laughs> little horse price fell right, fell right Aww. over. Right? I'm kidding. <laughs> but he ends up he, he ends up dying at the Gunnell house, the same house that um obviously that uh that, that Mosby caught Stoughton at. It, you know, he ends up fracturing his skull and dying. And then of course Marr, he fell off the boat. When a lot when some guy later in 1903 yeah. came said that he was paid eight thousand dollars to push him off the boat and um yeah yep um if ryan and ryan says phil sheridan was definitely born in the u.s so he could become president he definitely wasn't born in ireland at all there is some story that sheridan was born in ireland or he was born on the boat on the way over to over from ireland or he was born in New York or Ohio. It's not really an own charity. Oh, rec records back then, obviously. Were, were, were yeah, really but he, like, that. all of a sudden, he's conveniently like, yep, I was born in the United States. <laughs> like, dude, maybe you weren't. No, um, I feel sure. Yeah. Ben says, hey, from Dallas. Hey, Ben, what's going on, man? But yeah, like, um, God, I lost my train of thought. So well, that train's usually. Oh, no, no, I. Lost cards, so. Shut up. <laughs> Um, anyway, I did. There was a really cool post yesterday um, on Facebook that um, there's a person who they went to Ringgold Gap to see. So the New York Monument, they took pictures of it and nobody go like 137th. Yeah. But yeah. then they also said, I came here today because it's Claiborne's birthday, but I wanted to like, you know, post pictures of the one of the New York Monument, the guys that fought against him at Ringgold Gap. And then he went to Ringgold to that place where the Banbury and Groven are. Yeah. Her name was wrong, and I was kind of hoping they would have posted pictures of it, but they didn't. But they had they had a picture of the flag, which is that's the, the Hardy flag. flag. Yeah, yeah. Hardy yeah, flag, I mean, that, the flag of Claiborne's division, whatever you don't want. Don't forget, it's also the site of the wedding of one Dolly Parton. There, yeah, Ringo, Georgia. No, Ringo was cool. so that... cool to see someone else going there to go to know that <clears> someone else got to that monument, which is literally next to Ringgold Gap Public Works parking lot. Yeah, it's next to one of those like. One of those like transformers yeah. surrounded by a barbed wire fence or something. I don't know what the hell it it's is. It's where but... they store all their public works equipment. Yeah. But you know, you have to walk parallel to the train tracks because Ringgold Station's right there. The yeah. train tracks still go right to it. And by all accounts, it's the same building yeah. that they that they were at. So and you walk down and you find where David Ireland fought. Um yeah. in his 137th, you know, before he uh, heads off to Atlanta, you know, catches the bug and dies. Oh god. So no, but, but no, if you, it's it's cool that you do, when we did that because you know Ringgold, you ha, it's not it's not like the Henry Fuller Monument at Gettysburg where you have to no. you have to want it right. Yeah. This um or the Lamb Willow Monument, this one you just walk right to. But I don't I think you're right though. I don't think a lot of people waste their time going there. It's a Union monument out in yeah. the middle of Georgia. I don't think they could care less about it to be honest. I mean there were I don't think there are many people who um I, I think more people associate Ringgold with Dolly Parton than they do with yeah. David Iowa. Yeah, frankly well the george the, it, the amazing georgia winery is there too oh it is it is and, and the statue is really cool of um claiborne. Of, uh, of claiborne and it's a nice little area uh it's got some cool cool little markers i i, I dare i say it's on the wrong side of the highway just yeah. gonna say but i think ridge. they had to put it there because the atlanta campaign marker was already there and they were like well yeah we should probably just put it here because there's space yeah and it was maybe like I think the money for it was raised by there. There, there was once a Claiborne Society. I don't mm -hmm. think there is anymore because I was looking into joining it a few years ago when I found out who made the, um, you know, raised the the money for the statue. But the statue is done by the same person that did the Masonic monument um, at Gettysburg. Oh, talk about 
anyway, but the statue has incredible detail on it. I it, like, uh, I've seen it like I've seen it like two or three times now, and every time I go, I notice more stuff. And the one thing I like is the fact that. Um, and this is something I noticed the last time. Like, if you look at Claiborne, his, you can tell his hair at that point is really long because it's all like sticking out from his kepi. Uh -huh. So he probably hadn't, obviously, not have time to cut his hair. But there's like detail on the sword. You can see his spurs, and he's kind of looking off towards. I guess he's looking towards where Hooker would have been coming from. Yeah, well, he's the, the, he's supposed to be standing there looking, waiting for those troops to come with that artillery right there, ready to fire on him. Yeah. You know. Um, but it's a great statue, and anybody who's been to that area of Ringgold, which is between Atlanta and Chattanooga, you could take that highway and you can hit all those battlefields. That's, I mean, that's honestly, if you're in the Civil War and, and jump, if you're on the east, jump on a plane, go to Atlanta, rent a car, yeah. drive up, um, head towards Chattanooga, and go go see Pickett's Mill, go see Dallas, go see Ringgold Gap, go see all of them. Ringgold Gap is really cool. I, I mean, love that, Ringgold that, Gap. That, that that's really really neat. Uh, I'm glad we did that that time. Um, but the, the but the Claiborne statue is really really cool. But you can tell like anything else. We went there. We were probably the first people to been there for forever. You can tell. Yeah. yeah. You know this the grass. You could tell was a little long. No, it hasn't been stepped on. You can tell that no one's been there in yeah. a while. Yeah. But um, but it's cool though. It's a great area, and in yeah. in and, and the sight lines or the vistas are beautiful. I mean, oh yeah, it's a beautiful places, area. You know. Uh, Jim said that he loves the statue and he's got a framed picture of it in his, in his he calls it his war room. Is that what the, is that what the fucker frame sign is? <laughs> Jim, love that he has that sign. That's Jim's awesome. I love Jim. He's awesome. <laughs> All his books. He's got some books. Yeah. But but no, but that's a great area though. And I know he lives down in Murfreesboro, so he has an opportunity to go to a lot of those places. But um but I think I think here us you and I and people yeah. that we know I tend to be focused more um, in the Eastern Theater because that's it's closer. Yeah. You, you, you no know, shame in it. But I think uh, when you go to some of these places and you, you go to you go to Antietam or you go to Fisher's Hill or you go to Cedar Creek and you see how pretty and how pristine they are. That's nothing. The valley's cool, but that's nothing compared mm -hmm. to some of these Western Theater. Valleys oh yeah, where, you, where, where it's, it's you know you probably some of these places. You're probably the first person to step in this area since the people at the battle. That's how yeah. remote these places are. Yeah. Dal like, Dallas, Georgia comes to mind. Yeah. And that cemetery, Claiborne Cemetery in Jonesboro, that was so uh, cool. We, we, we stumbled that. upon that look at a beer one day. We Remember did. That? And well, I was like, Jonesboro, wasn't there a battle fought there? And we're like, let's go look for beer. And there was well, nothing. I didn't, know, I didn't know Jonesboro was that far away from Atlanta. I thought it was right there. And so I guess just looking at the map, so we're driving, we were going from Atlanta down to Andersonville and um, someone's little beer light was on and we had to stop and look for beer. And, um, and then we, next thing we stumbled upon Jonesboro, like, Hey, here, here we go. So we stopped yeah. and went to the battlefield and looked at the Claiborne cemetery and walked around for a while. Uh, and that's another cool place because the cemetery is on the site of the Confederate line where Claiborne yeah. fought and the train tracks the union guys are trying to get to is right there. And you can still, there's some urban development from yeah. around here. There's a gas station and stuff, but for the most part, you can sit there and you can look out and see the same site that Claiborne saw, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really, and the other one too, um, oh, Jim mentions he's been to the Confeder Confederate Cemetery in Dallas, Georgia. I don't think we've been to Dallas, Georgia yet. Yeah, we did. That's where, that's oh, where right. Pickett's Mill is. Oh, that's right too. Duh. We haven't been to the cemetery at all. No. Um, but yeah, Pickett's Mill is another one that's worth um, going. It's uh, like... It's one of those ones where you get there and you realize you're right on where the Union troops were, and you're like, "Wow, this is uh, this is nuts." Like, what? We're yeah, doing. no, that, that, that's a, that's a tough ground. We've talked a lot about Pickett's Mill, but yeah. but but the, the um, I thought we had a couple Pickett's Mill. I've been going it's just the tangents we go on sometimes, Mary. I don't know. Well, how we Ryan's get heading off. He has to, his lunch break is over, so he has to go back to work on St. Patrick's Day. Oh my God! How, how the Saint heck Patrick's is that Day, so Ryan? Hard? He said right, he's, right, got well, a, he's got a four day trial this week. Oh boy. Well, hopefully the jury finds it your way. You stay out of the big house, Ryan. So we're locked. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, Have a oh, great man. holiday, Ryan. But you stay safe out there. You'd be good. Um, but no, but, but again, there's a, a lot of these places are really, really cool. I love, I love Ringgold. I love Dallas. Uh, you know, I love going with making that ride and seeing cutting right to the mountain passes where Sherman came down with those troops on the Atlantic yeah. campaign. 
um, and, and seeing all that. And then coming into Chattanooga, and you, you, you got Chickamauga, right? You're right in the corner of the Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, right in that yeah. corner. It's, it's such a cool, it's such a cool area. You know, it, it's just, it is. Um, but like many people, you know, when we walked into Pickett's Mill and we, and it, it's, it, Pickett's Mill is kind of like Kennesaw Mountain where more people go just to walk their dogs. Yeah. Think of Bristol Station in the East. If you've been to Bristol, you know, if you go there, you're going to see soccer moms with dogs. That's all yeah. you're going to see. <laughs> but um, when we walked in there to the visitor center and, and, we, and they said, and we said, we're here for the Civil War. And, oh, my God, <laughs> really? And they brought us back to the, back to the secret lair. And we got to see the, um, you know, we got to see all of the, the stuff. Library. They had yeah. that, that, was, that was pretty cool. Their I'm little sure visitor about. center was really well done, too. Like, it told the story so well. And it was one that was very much like, you know, I think there was more about Howard in that little visitor center than there is in the entire. As G- Gettysburg, Gettysburg there was. There's <laughs> like way more. I mean, the guy's a freaking corps commander at Gettysburg, and the uh, I don't think there's even one picture of him in there. You know? No, there's not. I mean, granted, you have a Hancock, but he's a, you know, probably because he's a panorama, it takes up half the wall. You probably need to limit what you can put up there. <laughs> but the, but the old, but you saw you saw some, you saw. I, I think I, we have a picture somewhere around here where it has Howard on one side. And Claiborne on the other. It's like, yeah, I that? have it. It's just right over. It's in the visitor's guide that we got from Pickett's Mill. I have it here. I'll pull post. Yeah, we, we gotta we gotta get a, we gotta frame that shit up and put that somewhere. But but that's that's pretty cool though. Um, but that's uh, but that's pretty fun. But I I'd love to get back down there again. Um, and do and do a trip down there because we, we we were there last what, last April or so, right? Yep. Yeah, almost we'll, a we'll, year ago. We'll get down there again. It'd be it'd be cool to go down there and, and do, do like a organize something like we did at Gettysburg. But yeah. Know, over the over the uh, what do you call farm we did? Uh, we did like you mean like go to a bar or something? We did, yeah, we, we did that. Or no, day. no, go to um like that we went to um the Spangler. The yeah, they were, right. The day we went to Spangler farm, we did something yeah. afterwards. The day we did the uh the four score thing, Carmichael yeah. and Edelman, all those guys came. Do something like that, but in the south. That would be really cool. I don't know how many people would come, but it's still be fun to know. That would be cool to do that in the Georgia Winery because they have like that outdoor patio that's really nice there. Yeah. No, that that that's what we exactly what we're doing. Yeah, right? we, we could all sit there sipping our wine, like all. It is a winery. Excuse me, people, sir. But it's a winery for people who don't like wine, and that's what I love about it. It's like going to a brewery and doing a wine tasting because they're so relaxed. They're not that like was, here. You'll smell this. That, that was the place with with a girl. I don't know, bartender. I don't know what you. Yeah, call the bar the barista wine. Where she where she grabs my hand yeah. and she sticks a cork in it, and closes my hand. So what? I don't know. I told so you I've never been it. there before. I told you, you but it was, it was weird the way she did, like with some big religious experience type thing. I was like, okay, I still have the core. It was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um, Snyder says, "Cheers to the tenth Ohio title is better than O.O. Snyder, what's going on, man? Yeah, if that's no if that's the same Snyder from before. It's been a while. Wow. He disappeared for a while there, so good to see him again. Yeah. Uh, um, Gentilly says, "Nothing will beat the beauty of Manassas. You can walk by all the data centers. Can really picture the battle." <laughs> Well, anybody, you know, anybody who goes to Manassas, okay, everyone goes to Henry Hill House and, and they go see, they go see steroid wall Jackson. You go, you go to the stone house and the stone. And if you're cool like me, you'll walk across them. You walk across Bull Run. I remember when you tried to do right? that before and you almost fell in. The water was a little strong. But when I did it the one time, that was awesome. Yeah. I was, I've told the story before, but we were down there with our friend Bill one day and um, we found ourselves um, going over to, to Bull Run and I um I had my sword and so you know I take my shoes off and I walk across I'm walking across but around my sword and this, this the bridge is right there and at that very moment there were a bunch of cadets from West Point yeah. toward the battle and they see me crossing the sword and they're all sheer yelling it, yeah. it, it was it was one of those cool experiences but uh, but if you're gonna reason where I'm talking about this you got to go to Groveton and you got to go to the deep cut and you got to walk through those woods that's the best part of Manassas is second. Is you got to yes. go out there, and yeah. no one goes out there. People, I mean, Manassas. You said a Matthews Hill, and you look down at that vista. Yeah. You see where where the second Rhode Island. Where's we? Where's that freaking frail? By the way, speaking of, you you see you know all that stuff going on down Simon Baloo, all the stuff going on. It's yeah. beautiful, right? But if you go a little bit northwest and you go to Second Manassas and you see that area, that that's my favorite part of Manassas, no question. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah, the and the Western Theater I think is just as beautiful as the eastern if not in some places a little bit more like i mean chickamauga you can walk like there's so much walking there but we definitely need to do like an event in the western theater and i think yeah the georgia winery would be the perfect place to to meet up with people 
And we'll then do it. There, we'll do there's it. just so much to see there. You make your home base in Chattanooga. There's a lot of awesome Airbnbs in Chattanooga because they're smart and allow that kind of thing, unlike some other areas. Um, but the Airbnb we stayed in was a little cabin right on the slopes of Lookout Mountain. So we were right probably where the Confederate, like we figured we weren't we near where the Confederates were. Not really. No. And we, we like we looked at side. like a map to try and figure out where we were. We were right near where um the 137th fought. We were right oh, there. Okay. Right. We were right on the side of the mountain. And look out, look up mountain. That whole that whole area is freaking awesome. You go up that oh, yeah. was it, um, was it prospect or the park up at the top there? Blank. Uh, uh, Point Park. Point Park. Um, thinking of Fredericksburg. So you, you get up there and you see that beautiful vista. I know a lot not a lot of fighting was up there, but it's still really, really cool. But look out mountain is awesome. Chattanooga is a mandatory visit for a civil war nerd. Mandatory. Yeah. I mean, Missionary Ridge is great. You go see the area with one thirty seventh fall right down there, Wahatchee. You go, you go see all the, the, that. It, dare I say, it's tough to say, consider yourself a Civil War nerd without going to Chattanooga because that's how important it is. Oh, it is, and I mean, it's an important city, and you know, I mean, there's Vicksburg, and then you have to get Chattanooga, and Lincoln saw Chattanooga as being, you know, for a time before they had it, one of the most important. Um, cities, towns, what have you, just because it was this railway hub. And you can really get an idea when you're standing up in Lookout Mountain. The view is amazing. The battle is so cool to study. There's that beautiful painting that Hooker had commissioned as kind of an F you to Grant. Yeah. Where he, like, it's a beautiful painting. And I don't know, the whole area is just really like, it's Chattanooga is a cool place. There's some great breweries. We went to that one where that bartender, she was awesome. Chattanooga Brewing. Remember that one chick? She's like, do you have a cigarette? Remember that? Oh, oh, my her, back. oh yeah. No, no, she she grabbed you and she was <clears> like <throat> rubbing my back. It was so weird. Cost of chat. No, she was just walking around propositioning people at the bar. She's like, do you have a cigarette? And I was like, I think I said, no, I quit smoking like 20 years ago. And she's like, yeah. I was like, hi, here, here's my number. My name is John Gentile. I live in Fairfax. Call me. But no, but for, for, for real though, um, well, I love to do a trip like that with everybody. I'm, I'm always up for a trip down and down to that area. I mean, Atlanta yeah. kind of Atlanta is, you know. Yep, Chattanooga is the place to stay. Like I said, it's got like, I mean, if you prefer hotels, there's plenty of hotels to stay in. But there's also, you know, air some really cool Airbnbs. I know there's a really cool one when I was looking at them for for you and I. There's one that is right up in Lookout Mountain, and it's got like this like hot tub and like um, deck that overlooks Chattanooga. It was beautiful, but That's it was something. like, but it was like driving up there is a thing. And if it's foggy, it sucks. Well, it's, it's all windy roads, but the place we stayed with, it was, it was no picnic either. God knows you weren't driving, you know? I, I did drive some of it. I drove us from Andersonville to Atlanta. Ooh, that's, congratulations. <laughs> David said, LOL, that painting is a huge F you to Grant for sure. It is. It's like Grant says that Lookout Mountain is nothing but pure romance. And Hooker's like, fuck oh, you, dude. Yeah. That's no, it, it's nice, though. I mean, but I mean, I mean, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people who think, um, you know, people who think the Western theater is Aldi, you know, they'll, they'll, pre <laughs> they'll has been mentioning Aldi. He also said, that's why the person showed up at my house. Ding dong. <laughs> I'm here for the Liverpool game. I was, I was referred to you from people in Chattanooga. But no, but seriously, um, but that's another thing. We, 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 there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with these little trips. You, you can you can do the um, the AMU run, Aldi, Middleburg, Upper Mill. You can make that yeah. whole Calvary run all the way up north too. There's a lot yeah. of cool things you can do in that area too. But but, but seriously though, um, that would be a that would be a fun trip. Yeah, to really because like you make Chattanooga your base and your, you know. Um, Pickett's Mills maybe an hour same with Kennesaw um, Ringled Gap as well well Ringled Gap we'd have to go there for doing something at the winery conveniently um, but there's that is, so, that's a cool place but like chat like Chickamauga is great to hike great to explore you need like I mean people have asked me like how many days do I need at Chickamauga and then they're like but I'm only going for three I'm like uh, you need like I don't know I could spend a whole week out there um just explore. Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot to do. Chickamauga, if you've ever been to Chickamauga, it's a vast area. I mean, it's a big, big, big battlefield, and it's yeah. mostly woods and there's some you know here and there. Um, 
you know, but it, it's, it's a really, really cool place to go. It's right outside of Chattanooga. You're actually still in, you know, you're still in Georgia, but the, the line's right there. Um, but it, it's definitely worthwhile going to. Um, in, in, but again, we went out the day it was pouring rain. We met oh, Ed yeah. Lowe and his wife that day. That was a good day. Um, but yeah, but that, that, that's a trip you could definitely, definitely plan on. Yeah, we did get know? out too, and I'd never been there. I'd never been down to where Wilder at the Chickamauga Creek the bridges. I'd never been down to that bridge. And that was so awesome finally seeing that. And you're kind of like, you look at it and you're like, oh my God, like how, like this is where they did it. And then you can go to the cemetery and see Wilder's grave, which he was the mayor of Chattanooga. He uh -huh. liked the city so much. He moved there, became the mayor and he has the most, it's so nondescript, does not mention his war service, does not mention that he's mayor or anything. It just is like very nondescript. You wouldn't be able to learn much from the grave at all. No, I mean, you, th you think of some of these graves, I think of Dave Butterfield at West Point. It looks like, yeah. you know, the Taj Mahal and even even Phil Carney over at Ar Arlington. But you see um, but you see his, and it's just very nondescript. He's buried in, around in the middle of other people. Yeah. And this is one of the A-list people, you know, the Lightning Brigade in, in the American Civil War. And he's, you know, he, he doesn't get the publicity he gets. Um, Minty doesn't get much publicity. But I, I think... I. I I think for the most part, you're more of a wilder girl. Oh, yeah. A minty guy, right? As far as yeah. that whole thing with the bridges goes on the 18th there, as far as the first day yeah. of Chattanooga, of Chickamauga. But again, these are people who need to be studied that don't get a lot of the publicity. It is because they're not in the East and they're not named Grant, not named Sherman. I get yeah. that. I get that. Just like Claiborne, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's, and you know, the thing with Minty and Wilder, fascinating story, like just how they have to hold off those confederates and they're like well i guess we're saving the army today and you know nobody really talks about that aspect of the battle of chickamauga but had they not done that things would uh -huh. have been a lot different like way different i think yeah they, they they put that speed bump in very similar to what john buford did at gettysburg very similar they were able to hold a line on the river of death right <laughs> they, they were able to, <laughs> see what i did there on the river right? of death <laughs> they, they were they were able to hold that line yeah. to slow that roll of the confederates and admittedly we talk about brag that, i mean that's considered his probably his greatest victory check him on yeah. but that whole thing was so friggin' disjointed and, and, and backwards and you know there was chuck you farley everywhere with that whole friggin well, thing. well you have but, like you know Hoke just being like, well, I've got orders to move, but you know what? Well, they're going back and forth. feel like moving I mean, today. I mean, they just, it just, it, it was, it was a mess, but they, you know, it worked and they got through there and they ultimately won the battle of Chickamauga. And Millie and you know, Hood and Longstreet, they had a lot to do with what went in that battle. Uh, when they, when they, the breakthrough, regardless of what the, the rock of Mill Springs, George Thomas did, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, I read somewhere where it's like reading about the battle of Chickamauga today on, it was, a page that was had Claiborne's biography on it and it talks about how he's like basically implying he single-handedly was the one throwing the assaults up at Chickamauga I'm like he was there but so was Longstreet yeah but you gotta give Hood credit for that though oh I, mean, I know those, no but those this is like this is the night this is the last day where they're throwing up the assaults onto where General Thomas is it's but after the breakthrough happened. yeah I know but his but his his eight brigades that that was that that I mean, you you gotta you gotta tip your hat. I mean, I know we have oh, yeah. we have fun we have fun with. Hood no, I totally here. give credit to Hood for what he did earlier in the day. Like he's why I think the Confederate. Like he was just like, well, gonna go break through that gap. Yeah. You know. But, but he he did it. He, and, but give Thomas credit, he was able to slow them down just enough over at Stonegrass to you know to keep. Yeah them to fall back into Chattanooga, which pushed them back. And it goes into the whole thing with Chattanooga and all that stuff we just talked about. But but there's a lot of cool things about it. But um what do we talk about this Lincoln thing? This oh, yeah. well, just a couple comments. There's um Ghost of Sickles Lake said so going to Gettysburg and when he said double day in is his favorite place to stay. Oh I love that play on Sickles Avenue. That's right down by the um that's right down by the uh, you know, Oak Hill. Down by the great Charles Tilden sixteen yeah. lane. He can look out the, his probably bedroom window and see and see the monument. Yeah, yeah. He he says that uh, it's it's definitely like he like staying at um, bed and breakfast and stuff, which is kind of like I mean we do the Airbnb thing, which is kind of similar, not really though, but like said so the little Airbnb we stayed at in Chattanooga. Yeah, sickles, was, I don't know about sickles out. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I know exactly where it is though. Yeah. that was for sale a couple of years ago. Yeah, but yeah, we do need to talk about manhunt. 
which yeah, is the, I mean, uh, so I know this was kind of off the beaten path a little bit, but for anybody who has Apple TV, all 37 people of Apple TV, um, great episode of the Patriots, by the way, that, that mm -hmm. miniseries, that dynasty thing was awesome, yeah. but, but changing gears here, that, that, that's a fascinating thing because, you know, for someone like me who kind of cut my teeth in the civil war on the Lincoln assassination okay. school yeah. coming through, um, it's 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 interesting, you know. James Swanson's book Manhunt is is, in my opinion, the second best book on yeah. on the Booth assassination. Of course, the yeah. assassination. Of course, uh, Michael Coppins' gold standard book, oh, American God. Brutus. Is I the love best American book. Brutus. I've right? I've read it twice. I love it because I love that you get to know the conspirators and their background so much more than you do. It, it's like you know, like I've I've said to you many times. Sometimes it seems like these people just appeared on April 14th and did the bad, bad thing. And then they kind of disappear from history and you never really hear about them again. Whereas um, American Brutus gives them a background and you understand why they're doing it. You find out that George Adzerat joins the conspiracy to kidnap, not kill Lincoln, um, oh. because he has a three-year-old daughter and he needs to be able to provide for her somehow. And that's his, he's at the last, that's kind of like, okay, well, this is what I have to do to provide for my daughter. Then this is what I'm going to do. You know? No, and that, that's not that, right. And American Brutus is focused on the background of Booth, a lot of Tudor Hall, a lot of Junius, a lot of the family, yeah. a lot of getting idea, getting to know who this, this Booth guy is, right? And then it talks about the assassination for the most part, where Manhunt kind of begins on, August, on April 14th. 14th yeah. And talks about real quick the assassination. It doesn't talk a lot about that. It talks well. The best thing about that book is is it, it it it's very vivid of the night of the assassination. Just just imagine, right? You, the the war is basically over. You know, Lee surrendered. You know, uh, Joe, Joseph E. Johns is running around North Carolina. You know, he's he's having about as much success as the Tar Heels did last night. Yes. You know, as far <laughs> as that whole thing, right? Sorry, Jacob. But anyway, he, he the war is basically over. They're firing fireworks off, people celebrating, people having a good time. And then this whole thing goes down with the assassination happens. And it talks a lot about, just, just imagine 9-11 again, right? People, people yeah. who are old enough to remember 9-11, remember the feeling where, you don't know, what's going on. There's all these rumors mm -hmm. going around. And, and that's what April 14th in D.C. was. You're hearing these fireworks going off. And there are rumors that it's Confederate cannon. You're hearing troops rolling through the city on horses. There are rumors that it's Confederate cavalry starting a war again. And it's very vivid how his book captures that. Yeah. And the, the miniseries, you know, and people are talking a lot about a lot of the historical errors that are in it. And there, there are plenty. There are. But I'm I sorry, mean, but I don't consider Stanton's lack of beard to be a historical error. No, I mean, for so the... Swanson's book, for the most part, talks about how it starts the assassination. It talks about how you know he's sitting at the Star Tavern. He, yep. He's drinking. You know, uh, Parker's there. His Lincoln's bodyguard is there. He blows. He leaves and go gets hammered. He's drinking. You know, the, the allegedly he's drinking. He has a conversation with Booth, which is disputed. Booth shoots Lincoln. Right. Yep. He escapes across the Navy Street, the Navy Bridge. And he, Davy Harrell follows him, and the whole book is about the, his escape in the yeah. manhunt um, to chase him down. And this miniseries is about that. So it's not about the, the assassination per se. It's about chasing Booth. And what I've noticed about reading some reviews on social media, by reviews, I mean the, the people, the, the genius on Facebook and Twitter, right? <laughs> They're focused on the fact that it's not enough Lincoln content, not a lot, yeah. a lot of stuff on there. But again, it, where the series, when there's two episodes in the seven total, where the episode does a good job of this that we've seen so far is capturing the personalities yes. of some of the people, especially Sam Mudd. Oh they yeah. They nail that. They nail that, right? Yeah. People think he's this this lovable doctor. This he's oh shucks, I'll fi I'll fix him. He was a hardcore slaver. He was a prick. That's who he was, right? And the character from Veep who who plays him, yeah. the, the actor, does a great job 
talked about his, his helper, Mary, the slave that he helped yeah. capture and bring back, which people don't study a lot of that. Where it goes off the rails a little bit in these first couple episodes is it presents a couple things wrong. And it, when I say wrong, it, it's wrong insofar as it sets up the later stuff. Yeah. The biggest mistake they've made so far is the scene when Lewis Powell stumbles into the Surratt boarding house in Washington. And if you know the story and you study the Lincoln assassination more than you should, you know that he stumbled in there late at night one night yeah. while the cops were there. And the reason why it's important that it was at night was when they brought him in, Mary Surratt, she, the story is that she had possibly had cancer. Her eyes were going. I think she had cataracts pretty right. badly. She, by she, she, well, I don't know what she drove, but that's not the story, right? But, um, but they bring in, they bring in, they bring in Powell. And yeah. she goes, this guy's supposed to build you a, um, you know, build you a ditch. Yeah. I swear on my God, to God, I've never seen this man in my life. This big yeah. theatrical performance she puts on in the hallway, right where the karaoke is, by the way, rock and roll, by the way. Yeah. But the Amazing fact of that, right. But if you look at the stories, she, and they, he had the outfit on, it was dark with the gas mm-hmm. lamps. You can make a case she literally had could not recognize him because of the dark. Yeah. The miniseries has him getting rested in the daytime. Yeah. And that is a gigantic mistake because when you study the trial that took place later on, it talks a lot about the fact that her defense was she couldn't recognize him because it was dark. Yeah. That's a gigantic mistake. Yeah. That I mean, like kind time. of that, that changes things. Like I did post um in the chat, I did post the great review written by our friend Dave Taylor of the first episode. He's like, knows so much about the assassination he's got a great he's got a great page to um blog devoted to it but he reviewed it and it was it was really good and he tells a lot about the history like he breaks it's a long long review but Mm. if you don't know a lot about the lincoln assassination or you want to learn a little bit about like his review of manhunt it is really good to learn stuff like and he says and we agree with this you know he said like yeah there's historical inaccuracies but if it gets somebody questioning stuff, like if it's like, oh, why did that happen? And it gets them reading American right. Brutus or Manhunt, then the show's done its job. And it's also, too, the one thing to take into consideration if you're watching this is it is historical fiction. It is not going to be accurate. And some of the, like, you know, some of the reviews I've read about it be that now Wall Street Journal gave it a pretty good review. Um, but some of the other reviews I've read of it, it's just like tearing it, like, you know, basically tearing it apart. So here, and, here's the thing. A, a, a couple of weeks ago, you and I had the opportunity to go to an event and have dinner with Sonny Williams, right? Yeah. Who was an astronaut. She's, you know, she's been up on the, on the space shuttle a bunch of times. Yeah. And I, I, and I was talking to her one time uh, before the dinner. And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, you've been in space. You've been up there. You know the reality. How do you feel when you watch like Star Wars? Are you mortified by it because of how big it is? You start laughing. You just no, I love it because you know mm-hmm. something. It's completely wrong with science and history, but it's still cool. It's entertainment, yeah, right. And that's the, that parallel with this thing. If an astronaut can go up to space and she can still enjoy watching Battlestar Galactica and all that stuff yeah. because it's entertaining, even though it's wrong. Why can't someone who studies history at least watch for the entertainment value and not worry about it? Yes, you can make your case that Edwin Stanton, okay, who was a gruff, miserable type of guy, and they yeah. did a good job painting him with the talk about his son dying and earlier yeah. and the wife, but they they make him look like he's Perry Mason. And the thing about it is they really Thomas Eckhart's there, but he's in the background. Eckhart's the guy who does a lot of the legwork. Yeah. He's the guy who does a lot of the, the detective doctor, you know, the, 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 micro, the microphone, what the fuck the thing called. Um, anyway, I'm blank on what that thing is. Um, but but he's, he, he's, he's the detective with it. It's the equivalent of doing a story on Gettysburg about the second Corps and having John Gibbon be the man. And I mean, Hancock in the background with this yeah. Dairy, Cube, Dairy Queen just sitting in the background. <laughs> the but, 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 but it flips the narrative. It flips the people. So there are things that are wrong with it. Yeah. But my only criticism with it is he really fails to, to do what, what Swanson did best, which was really capture 
the chaos and the fear and the mayhem of April 14th. Yeah. It blows right through it like it's just a transaction. Yeah. I like it for the most part. I do. Episode three is going to be the pine thicket episode. And this is like what, what I really enjoy and how I portray Thomas Jones and Samuel yeah. Cox is going to tell me a lot about how they do this. Now I did look ahead and Willie Jeff, one of Mosby's guys who helped mm -hmm. ultimately overturn, you know, the apple cart and get, get Booth caught. The actor is like this, this Chippendale guy, this jacked up her, this, yeah. this dude from Baywatch type looking guy where that's not who Willie Jen was. So there's a lot of Hollywood in this. I yep. like it, but, but I think, I think it misses a little bit, but I'm enjoying it because it's, if you watch this and you, and you ultimately lead you to read the book and then hopefully it gets you to read uh, Michael yeah. Kaufman, maybe, maybe you'll, you know, maybe you'll read, um, you'll read some of the other books uh, that, you know, that shot Papa dead. Avoid Eisen Schimmel's book because that yep. book kind of sucks. But but um, if you read Finest Bates' book, that's a whole other yep. friggin' set of problems. But but it, it should if it gives you a little bit of insight to read more than it's worth it. I'm enjoying it just because it's Booth and, and Lincoln. I, I, I think it's all cool. But I but I think it misses the boat on certain things. But I'm I'm holding out hope, Mary. Holding out hope that there's not going to be a big dance routine later in this thing that's going to screw the whole thing up. You know, this turns out like the you know the Garrett family orchestra here. You know, oh jeez. But but I think I think it's pretty good. I just think that there are certain things they could have focused on, um, but they get just enough right to keep you going. Yep. Right. Yep. It's it's well it's well done. You know, <laughs> I sit there and I've had my cringy moments with it. I've had my moments where I've rolled my eyes, but you know what? I'm entertained. I think, and Miranda says, it's a TV drama, not a documentary. And that's the difference. It's not, um, for instance, uh, Killing Lincoln, which was an excellent documentary put out by National Geographic about, it's almost 10 years ago now, uh, not based off that terrible book of the same name. Um, it was really good. And it was like, yeah. uh, it was a documentary narrated by Tom Hanks. And it was really good. It was very, it was only about 90 minutes though. So it doesn't capture everything with the assassination. But the guy who right. played Booth in that, I think it was Jesse Johnson. He was really good um but it's a good one too to check out because it's going to give you kind of that high level overview of it and then hopefully you go read you know kaufman's book you go read swanson's mm -hmm. book and all that um you know david says as long as it's based on historical events or some such and doesn't try and pretend it's all facts i can deal with it exactly based on well, historical events you know is where they're and they you know i like you know i do like the person playing stanton at first i was like well stanton's supposed to have a beard but then i'm like you know what? He's doing a good job. Like, no, granted, the guy who played him in um in the Lincoln movie is great. Yes. I, I've always said John Goodman would be a fantastic Stanton. Yeah. Um, Kevin Klein in the conspiracy was a train wreck as Stanton. Uh he, he's not a very good actor anyway, Kevin Klein. Not for not that I I I like Dave, but for the most part, he's you know, not the yeah. best in the world. But again, don't watch this as if you're watching a documentary on history. It's just, it's just, it's check your mind at the door, watch it. It gives an overview about it. It has yeah. to keep things in a nice clean box through episode to episode. Yes, of course, there are things that are totally wrong. But you know something? I hate to tell you this, Mary, but Gettysburg is not the most accurate movie either. Neither, most of them aren't. Yeah. I mean, the reality is even the books on this stuff aren't 100% accurate because no. you're getting a slant on it, you're getting a spin yeah. on it. You know, we, and, and it's interesting, we just got, an advanced copy of Gelzo's New Gettysburg book yesterday yeah. in the mail. And it's all it is, is a bunch of letters from soldiers at Gettysburg. And I'm dying to read this. Um, and so when we have him on to talk about this. We'll be able to talk specifically about the letters about it. But this is more black and white. This is not interpretation. It, it, it's all like Carmichael's book, right? Yep. The, yeah, the, it's not it's not War for the Common Soldier where there's no, like, no. like, well, War for the Common Soldier, he is giving more um kind of commentary and i don't know how much commentary guels is giving um but i'm looking forward to reading it too i was flipping through it and it's got it like you know it's got like day by day it's got the lead up it's got you know east cemetery hill it's got letters relating to that it's got right. stuff that was written in magazines after the war it's just kind of like a kind of primary secondary sources that came out after the battle um but, oh jim mentions north and south has got me interested in the civil war so yeah that in north and south is mm, a little not it's good no, but, but again it's it's 
look, take it for what it is. I, I think I think people are so there's I think people nowadays watch these shows because they want to criticize it. Yeah. You know what you know what you know why I hate to say, Mary? People want to show on social media how smart they are. Yep. Right. So they're gonna sit there and talk about well, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. This guy would, would have gone this way. This guy would have gone that way. And yes, I realize they get Ned Spain were totally wrong. I get that. The yeah. Peanuts character is totally wrong. I get that. But you know what, though? They're in it. And they're going to talk about it. And they're going to explain how it goes. If if watching Apple TV is going to be your history, then that, that, fine. Okay, fine. But I mean, there. Are, but no, no matter what you read, you can criticize this. But it's, it's, it's like anything else. Thornton Mellon, the great Thornton Mellon, Mary, from the movie Bad. Uh, back to school he said why why read when you can just watch a movie right and that because mm-hmm. it, it takes less time and that's that's the reality people are gonna yeah. watch it but I, when i knew this thing came out i knew there was going to be some um there was going to be a lot of people hitting it but i did notice a lot of the people on social media who were who are ripping on this it's kind of clear they really don't know a hell of a lot about the assassination no, especially no, the about one... the, especially about boots escape yeah right they, they yeah. just they just don't and focusing on a beard, eh, I get that. Yeah. But again, it's the same people who make fun of the beards in Gettysburg. Yeah. I mean, and it's, forget- it's just, you know, it's one of those things. There's a lot wrong with the movie Gettysburg. But you think of the people that got into the Civil War that are now studying it because of that. Same with North and South. It's had the impact that it needs to have. I mean, for instance, movie Gettysburg, the one thing that bothers me the most about it, and MJ and I joke about this all the time, is when Meade arrived on the field, he doesn't go talk to Hancock. He goes to talk to Howard and Sickles and Slocum. Yeah, Hancock's well, the, the, not even on the field, but I'm not going to like hate on the movie for that reason. You know, that movie made me read more about Gettysburg. Well, Gettysburg is a bromance set in a war environment. It's not a war movie. That that's the thing. Yeah, it's it, it it's a movie geared to talk about the personal connections between the North and the South. They focus on Armistead Hancock a lot, but that's all that is. I mean, but the people we know a lot of people who've seen that movie, obviously, and that that was their their gateway drug into Gettysburg. Yeah. And then they read the book and like, okay, this isn't really totally true. Um, Tom McMillan's awesome book on Armistead Hancock kind yeah. of debunks a lot of that. You know, old teary old you know Armistead talk with yeah. old Winnie cross the line i'm just gonna say you want to talk about somebody who doesn't look at all like the person richard jordan looked nothing like armistead well, no i i know right but, a bit, you know, again, but you're getting, like getting nitpicky about how somebody looks but that movie came out obviously 1993 around there was yeah. a lot different than the society is now but i think but i think it, it's it gives you a flavor to study more some people do some people don't and i think that's what this booth uh, manhunt thing is going to do i mean if it really if it if it minimizes Cox and Jones, that'll be disappointing. If but, but if it talks specifically about getting across the river and it talks about a lot of the plights they took and you know going to Maryland again the wrong way and then finally getting into, yeah. into Virginia, you know, port tobacco, that whole thing culminating in Garrett's farm. It'll be interesting to see how it comes. What I what I'm curious about is how much time they're gonna spend on the trial. If yeah, because because and I don't think they're going to because Booth, I think it's gonna end with Booth being killed. Right, because yeah. seven over, episodes. But, yeah, I don't know, but I I don't know. If we're going to be talking a lot about, um, you know, how much a lot of these these justices, you know, like I, I looked I looked ahead in the in the the, the cast. So I was curious who was going to play who. I didn't see Hunter or Krauts or oh. Howe or Aiken, Clendenin, and Wallace, Foster, Harris, or Tonkin. But didn't you post that anywhere. picture with the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man as Hancock? Yeah, he's he's gonna make an episode, you know, but but that's but that's the reality. Is it gonna be a Joseph Holt or a John Bingham or a yeah. Henry Burnett? I don't know, but um, but I don't think they're gonna focus a lot on the trial. I think they're gonna focus a lot on just on just the chase. But again, I mean, it's fascinating to watch. If you're into it, then you're gonna be into it. Yeah. If you're not, you're not. But take it for what it is. I mean, you know, you're, 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 yeah. You're and if you don't you- like it, that's totally cool too, for whatever reason. But like, you know, just don't like don't dismiss it based on what is being said about it right now. Like give it a chance for yourself and just kind of, you know, keep in mind. It's a, you know, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you a question on this. And I don't know the answer to this, but because you're into this way more than I am. When Hamilton came out, was there a social media outrage? that it was a black guy playing Hamilton. I don't remember, but not a lot. 
Did you, no, did you, not uh, really. Uh, right, I was just curious was it because the, the whole beard thing, and we saw that a lot about people talk about. I can't get over the beard. I can't, you can't yeah, get over the yeah, there, What are you talking about? Yeah, you there know? was someone like it's it's taking me out of the story, and it's like. I mean, I was a little bit, oh dear, what are they doing with this? And then the guy started being stanton. and I'm like, he's good, you know? I mean, he, he he does the job well as far as he seems to be a little a little less black and white than the real Stanton was. Yeah, I mean, I don't you know, like the real Stanton. A, a couple a couple of years ago, History Channel, I think it was History Channel anyway, they made a special about Samuel Adams. Not John Adams, Samuel Adams. And, and that was bad. They had him like Spider-Man jumping from balcony to balcony. And, and I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. And that was, that was, admittedly that was bad. But I can see why people would take shots on certain people. But again, take a step back and look at the big picture with this. Yep. Um, they capture Booth's character halfway decent. Yeah. Um, he's good. They do him pretty well. Uh, what's his name from... Um, Min Midnight the, Mass. Uh, mid him. no, not not him. But the guy who played Booth, Jesse. What's his oh, name? Oh, Jesse Johnson is Jesse really my Johnson booth. was a fantastic John Wilkes Booth in that Tom Hanks um, Killing Lincoln. Killing thing. Lincoln. He was good. Um, and that's the, the other thing about this is, that, um, you know, j j there's no there's no there's no Tanner, the, 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 the guy who did the shorthand. And I thought yeah. he was a he was an interesting character who who they blow they blow right through in that in that thing too. Um, but again, I, for someone who studied this a lot, it, it's easy to to really pick and choose it. But I'm still going to enjoy it. And I, I know, I know. Oh yeah. You, and speaking with Dave, he's he feels the same way about it. And he's he's the he, I think he's one of the absolute top, most knowledgeable people of the assassination. Of the and he's such a nice guy. He's a fun guy to right. like. We've had him on as a guest on our podcast before, and he's yeah. a really nice guy. He knows his stuff. He's so down to earth. Um, I did post a link to um, his review which is really good well worth reading um but yeah and the lincoln in manhunt i really like him he's played by um i think it's hamish linklater who was the priest in midnight mass who was like i like that was my care he's of all those of those three shows of ha house on haunting a hill house bly manor and midnight mass he is by far my favorite character he was just so good as the priest and he plays lincoln and he does it really well and of course some of us were joking around about if you've seen midnight mass you know about the demon creature <laughs> we yeah, no. about it, like what if the demon creature shows up at some point that was pretty good he was in that movie um the big short too yeah and it's funny that hamish linklater is a vampire in midnight mass and now he's playing abraham lincoln and snyder just mentions like can we talk about the most historically accurate civil war movie abraham lincoln vampire hunter well i mean i i right that one i think another good movie funny, though, well it, it, it is because if, if you sit back and you just think about it it, it all makes sense right as far as how, how they print it's obviously wrong but the way they present it it's like okay, Confederates are vampires. They're all trying to take, and yeah. it's just uh, it's it's very well done. Um, I'm not sure I like him in Lincoln though. I mean, yeah, I like him in this 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 manhunt. He seems very cliché-ish. Like he's he's trying too hard to be Lincoln. I like him. I like him. I mean, my, Daniel Day Lewis is my favorite, and then I I did like Billy Campbell. I know you didn't like Billy Campbell in Killing Lincoln. No, I I, I really liked Billy Campbell in Killing Lincoln. He Daniel Day good. Lewis is the gold standard for Lincoln. Oh yeah, he yeah, same. Like worked. I like Daniel Day Lewis and Billy Campbell are my two favorite ones. And I but I like <laughs> I like Linklater in this. He's good. He's, no, he, no, he's it's, yeah. it's whatever. But again, again, he's Lincoln's not the focus on this. He, he's he's dead and gone, uh, pretty quickly. And it's all about what's going to happen with Booth and and um. Yeah, I mean, the the woman who plays Mary Surratt, she you know she seems to, she seems to be a little more whiny than she probably yeah, really was. She's really whiny. Um, and I don't see I don't see any any part of her daughter involved in this. No, no, and I this. asked you that because I thought I'm like I thought Anna for a while was kept with her mother in the prison. I I well, she, well, she, Anna she, and she the roommate. Well, she originally went to the, went to the old Capitol prison. That's what that's where, where Mary Sarah went. Yeah. In her real life, they moved her because she was such a pain in the ass that the other the other inmates were like, Can you get rid of this? Ugh, I hate her, yeah. right? And they finally moved her, but but again, um, Anna's not part of it. Um, and she was she was a conspirator um a lot. Yeah. And that's the, the thing too, is how do you not introduce her character 
if you're not going to have a trial. But I think this isn't going to have a trial. I think it's going to end with no. me. You I know. think this is one of those things where it's like they have to kind of pick and choose their characters. They're they're combining some characters together. Like, you know, the Killing Lincoln documentary did not have Mary Surratt as a character at all. Um, but it talks about a little bit about the trial and it ta- it shows the hangings at the end um, and all that. Like, well, just the pictures of them that were taken. Um, but it doesn't really talk about them. I hope this has like at least a bit of the trial in it to talk about what happens. I hope they, you know, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna do like a like one of those they show the words at the end. This is what yeah. happened type thing. Yeah. Uh, but again, the, the primary focus. I don't think you're gonna see George Atzer anymore. I don't think you're gonna see any of these people anymore. I think no. it's gonna focus on Davy and it's gonna focus on Booth and it's gonna have what characters they run into. They got the Swan character right. They really did. Yeah, because people have this perception. If you if you study him, he's some slave and he's pushed around, and he basically Booth tries to, you know, white supremacy him, and he's yeah. like, "You can go screw yourself. You can give me money, or you can get the hell up off this property." Yeah, because he's like, "I'm right the now. master of this property. I'm yeah. free." And and, and uh, he says, "Every minute you're on this property without giving me money, I'm charging you rent. So you better give yeah. me my money." You know, and he ends up, and Booth does the whole, "Well, we'll find our own way." And Harold's like, "Dude, no." Yeah. Let's let's so they he, Swan rides with him down a rich hill, introduces him to you know to Samuel Cox, who introduces him to Thomas Jones, the, the picket. And that's where he spends all spends all that time reading the newspapers, writing in his diary. And I hope they focus a lot on that because that's when he finds out that he's not a hero, that he's yeah. a villain. And yeah, he flips out. That. And I think that's where he has his pucker effect, holy shit moments, yeah. and he flips. He does his oh, what the hell did I do moment. Yeah. And then it turns into saving his own life. And um, they drown the horses. They shoot and drown the yeah. horses. You know? That that was oh. my one of my favorite parts I was telling you this morning in Killing Lincoln was when Tom Hanks is narrating the Pine Thicket Park part and like Booth is reading the papers and, and the, the line is just, and John Wilkes Booth reads the worst reviews of his life. And he just looks up from the paper and he's like, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and he writes, you know, he writes in his diary and he does, he you know, writes a lot of that stuff. And, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's a really fascinating part. Cause don't forget to, while this is all going on, you still got Sherman and Joseph Johnson in yep. North Carolina. And it all ends up on the 26th of April, the same exact day, the whole thing kind of f- falls apart at the end for all of it. Well, we but were talking I, yesterday with Gentilly about how like, you know, Mosby, some of his Rangers, were were with them too and that's that's something i admittedly have not studied a lot of is like the role that R- mosby's rangers are playing in it at this point yeah and you know and because willie jet is and some of the other guys are, are former rangers they sort of tie this whole john mosby was he part of it which he it, it just it's just not it's just it's just conspiracy theory yeah. stuff but again that was the big that was the big thing is are the confederates behind it and and you remember when 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 they found out about the assassination when Sherman's going to meet with Joseph E. Johnson. Johnson's like, this, we didn't do this. Yeah. And Jeff Davis, you know, shits himself. They're going to think I did this. And so he, he goes on the run and, and, and it all goes, it all goes back to that. And there's a line in that mini series where, where someone says the stands and what happens if it's proven it's the Confederacy. He's like, well, it's going to be another war. Yep. And I don't know how, what they would have done. I mean, there's no, no one left to fight in the South. They don't know what they're going to do. No. Roll through and, carpet bomb the whole, the whole side i don't think so but but i but you I send think, crosby in from masters of the air who's also playing uh, masters of the air i don't know about that one i don't know about that one no looking back i'm like it was okay but it was not band of brothers i'm i'm not a world war ii guy and there's a lot of mind. good podcasts for that but i'm just gonna say a plane i didn't like masters of the air i thought it sucked i did i thought the, the finale was good yeah but the episode it just it was a bunch of unlikable characters, a bunch of random storylines. I, I just, I just, I just didn't like it. I did, but whatever. People teach Each their, their own. own. We watched. I'm glad we did. I had a, I had a great uncle like who it. was, who was a, but he was a bomber. Was, like, but I mean, it, it didn't have the Top Gun volleyball topless scene, which I was expecting yeah. was going to pop up. But it was pretty close. It was, but I don't know. But I think, but I think this is this is this is going to be an interesting watch going through it. Um, and we're likely going to have Dave Taylor on us with an episode to talk Hopefully, about this when yep. it's all done. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll go on with this. But I'm not looking forward to it, though. You know. Yeah, and I, I was glad that he his review of it because I was you know whenever something like this comes out, I'm always like, oh, what's Dave Taylor going to think? You know, what does he think of it? Because he's usually pretty balanced. Really, like you know, kind of like 
well, if it gets people into it kind of thing, you know, that that's what matters. And I think that's sometimes where, you know, if you find yourself being really critical of it from a historical standpoint is put yourself in the shoes of someone who doesn't know that much about it. And this might be their introduction to it. And if it gets them interested, same with the movie Gettysburg, if it gets them interested, that's what matters. If they decide they're going to pick up that copy of Stephen Sears or Trudeau, um, if they want to learn more about Gettysburg or, you know, if they watch North and South and they're like, well, I'm going to read, you know, some just general book about the Civil War, then or that just, has done its job. Yeah. Or maybe, just maybe, who cares what other people think? Exactly. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, yeah. you don't. And, you know, I, I go back to the social media, especially Twitter, X or the hell it's freaking called on now. Is there people who have this militant, like you just pee to their front yard or something they, like they how just, dare you so, like so, that like, and it's like you know it's like okay you don't like it fine then don't watch it but does it, it doesn't look at the end of the day no one's going to be giving speeches at the abraham lincoln you know museum after watching this on that that's just, that that's not the point of it yeah the point is to watch the damn thing um and and, and just and just enjoy it for, for television it's entertainment goods we can do yeah. bitch about everything nowadays you know it's true especially you, you. I bitch about the bells that are currently going off behind me. Oh yeah, we live next to a church, which is good. you know, it's just kind of ironic in a lot of ways. But yeah, I think the bells go off at all different times. Yeah, uh, MJ mentions my my kid, my friend's kids who are nineteen and sixteen watch Manhunt and ask me for the books on the assassination tree. That's a win. That's awesome. Then it's done its job. Yeah, I mean, there's so many good books on that. There, there really, really are. I mean, uh, j- j- uh, this, God, I'm trying to. I mean, obviously, American Brutus is the best one. All these books on my top shelf are all assassination books. There's a, there's a whole bunch from there. Um, but they, uh, Anthony Pitch's They Kill Papa Dead's really, yeah. really good. That, that's one of the more modern ones. Um, but, you know, actually, speaking, of, I'm glad you're going to be going about this all of a sudden. Here. Jim thought that was the ice cream truck. Oh, God, we all be, you can't even be running for that, especially this one. You know? <laughs> it was the church. The one, was character, the one character we haven't talked about this the one character that this miniseries really nails is lewis whiteman right yeah where he's this whiny little oh my oh, god and that's i'm like this is how i've always pictured Whiteman. and if you, if you read whiteman's book on the assassination it's it's a it's like shaggy wasn't me yeah, that song's playing in your head the whole time you're reading it. He works the war department. He's living at he's living at the Surratt boarding house, and he basically sees um, he sees a lot of of what's going on the, these meetings. But he's a scared shitless. He's going to be arrested, and a lot of his evidence, um, him and a guy named John Lloyd, who was kind of the, the barkeep caretaker at Surrattsville, the house down in down in Clinton, Maryland, were the ones who really hanged Mary Surratt. And it was yeah. all pushing. It was her. It was her. It was not me. But his hands are so goddamn dirty with this. But they, they, the character captures him is this whiny, sniveling little. I don't know how best way to describe bitch. it. Like, like this, this, this hateful little douchebag guy. And and that's that's who he was. I, I think it does a really good job capturing him. Um, yeah. But that's pretty good though. Um, but the. Uh, Eisen Schimmel's book and, and finest book, The Escape and Suicide of, I, of, of the, the Booth that Survives, yeah. Garrett Farm book, isn't worth it. Um, but there are a lot of good ones, though. Um, there are definitely a lot of good ones, no question about it. Yeah. Um, Richard asked, any thoughts on come retribution? I went and looked it up, and it's a book um, from 1988 by Tidwell. Yeah. Um, and it's about the Confederate Secret Service and the assassination of Lincoln. I per- yeah. I have not read it before. I've read that one. I re- it's, it's somewhere in here. I've read that one years ago. And it's it's got a lot. We talked a little bit about a, a lot about Mosby, right? And a lot of stuff and, and things like that. If, if you study Ulrich Dahlgren and you talk about his raid, mm-hmm. and and they captured papers on him that talked about killing Jefferson Davis in the Confederate Congress and assassination, and it led into a lot of different things. After that, he gets killed out not far from he gets killed in Virginia, um, and. He's the son of the Navy daughter, right? And he gets captured and, and, and he gets killed and they find these papers on him. And no one denies, everyone in the North denies it, stands in, we didn't freaking, this was not an assassination plot, but it led to a lot of, is assassination acceptable? 
And there was stories that there was poison. There was, there was like smallpox blankets sent to the White House, all this stuff that, that, and that's what that kind of book talks about is, is, is was an assassination plot. Most of it's been debunked and almost all of it has, but this is a lot of the stories that came out of this assassination. The, the Dahlgren thing, we did, we did an episode of Dahlgren, I think. Yeah, we did. Right? Um, and that's where a lot of it comes from, is was this all a, a government's, you know, supplied um, assassination plot? There are no real connections to Booth and the Confederacy. There really aren't. Yeah. There's a there's a loose line, uh, line where Booth and the kidnapping plot with Richmond. Yeah. But once Richmond falls, the government's gone. It's all apart anyway. So there's no real direct connection. There was no incentive for the South to shoot Lincoln at that point. There was none. No. And, it, and history has shown that it was the worst thing they ever did. But that book, um, you know, uh, Tidwell's book is interesting because, again, it's like Eisenschimmel. You read it. Eisenschimmel's book blames the assassination on the Catholic Church. Yeah. That's who he blames it on. Well, you read it and you go, huh. But then you then the the part of your brain, left brain, right brain, whatever the logical like, part uh. is, that one goes, no. And that's well, what Tidwell's like, book is. But it's an, it's an interesting book, though. It, it does. But it takes the Dahlgren raid and makes that more of what it is. And no one will ever know what the hell happened with the Dahlgren raid. But no. they did find papers on him that says you are to seize Richmond. I don't know how the hell he's going to do with 100 guys. Take Richmond, kill the president, and kill Congress and take them out. And that's, and that, that's what spurred the entire thing. But that's where it yeah. comes from. Um, and I was going to say, so some people too, regarding conspiracy theories, Miranda and Snyder are kind of talking about it a little bit. Um, and I just said, I'm like, just wait till the Stanton did it crowd comes out. And that was what, that was kind of the conspiracy theory that what's his face put forward in his book. Right. Killing Lincoln. Um, he writes all the killing Kennedy, killing everybody books. No, no. There's, there's a lot of that. Because what happens is when you have a, an assassination, right it, it, like anything else it's conspiracy theory it's tabloid stuff but that's yeah. where it all comes from and, and, and it's interesting when you read it but a lot of it is so easily debunked at the end of the day john wilkes booth was a guy who who flipped his flipped his wig somewhere along the way he wanted to he wanted to flip the war in the confederacy to help make himself famous by kidnapping him yeah um, basically turning the president over to, re to release a lot of Confederate generals to keep the war going, right? The parole system. When the war ends, there was nothing to do. He decides one day, and if, you know, a lot of the stories say he's sitting there hearing Lincoln's speech about, and, and, you know, franchising the, the free blacks, and he's gonna he's gonna kill him now. And a yeah. lot of that is all word of mouth. It's it's all hearsay, and, and a lot of people like me don't think that phrase that he said was ever said, right? But that's that's just me. But yeah. he ends up deciding to kill him, whether it was a fit of rage, whether it was his final way to get the self going. I truly think he did think that he was going to shoot him. He was going to escape to the south, And he was going to be he, a hero. And, and he was going to be a hero. And it was all about him. Now, don't forget the psychology of John Wilkes Booth. He grows up in this, this family of actors with the greatest actor of, of all time in, yeah. Ju Ju in that area, who was, the, who was the 19th century Marlon Brando. That's yeah. who he was. You've got a brother who's really famous. Who's like Leonardo DiCaprio. With well, it's, it's, almost, it's, it's almost like the Baldwin brothers, where Alec Baldwin's more famous than Billy Baldwin. And, and yeah. John Wilkes Booth is Billy. He, he, I know there's probably a better comparison, but but that's what he was. He was he, he spent a lot of his time in the South. He got his head filled up with a lot of crap. <laughs> and he you know he's in New York City on November 25th, right? Yep. 1864, doing his play at the, at the Winter Garden with his brothers while this while this New York City's burning. Yep. And he sees a lot of this stuff going, and he decides for whatever reason, April 14th, he finds out that that Lincoln's going to be at Ford's. He knows Ford's. He has his plan. He's going to shoot him. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, he 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 does it. He pulls it off. He almost gets away with it. And I'll tell you, if he doesn't break his leg, he probably gets away. Yeah, because stops that stopping at Mud's house for that critical night really got him screwed. He yeah, because now he's going to stop at Garris because he can't ride the horse. But again, it leads to a lot of conspiracy. Theory. Breaking so, his so, leg was really what did him in. Oh yes, yeah, we just said that. That was that yeah. was it. Yeah, but it, it leads to you know it was an assassination attempt because of Dahlgren. It was Stanton. It was Joe. the other one, of course, was um 
was Daniel Johnson, who yeah. Booth tried to set up with that by leaving yeah. a letter for him at the Kirkwood Hotel, right? Yeah. And now, so he's trying to set up his escape. So you talk about Booth losing his mind. He put a lot of time and effort into this. Yeah, as far and as he, he didn't have that much time to plan it either. He went from like kidnapping to killing like so quickly to the point where Azeroth was like, Ooh, when did we change the game? <laughs> like, I didn't sign up for that. Right, and then it, it, it turn again, it turns into... You know, read Eisen Schimmel, it's one part stands in, one part Catholic Church. Uh, it, it turns into everything because it's because sometimes when it's so easy and everything fits in a box, it can't be right. Yeah. But sometimes the easiest solution is the solution. And I think that's the case. I don't think for a second that Finus Bates was correct in his book that he escaped and made it to Oklahoma to eat it and committed suicide and goes to Granbury of all places in Texas. Yeah. That's where he, that's where he goes. Um, but people, people think it, but people think the world's flat too. Yep. Right. People, <laughs> people, th- people think the Indians are going to win the world series. So there's that too. So. I do. But again, that's, that's what, but that's what makes history fun though, is you can, yep. you, you can not take it too seriously. You can read all these different theories and you can make up your own opinions and all that stuff. But, but my, my opinion is pretty clear. He was clearly shot and killed at Garrett's farm. He yes. Clearly was. Yep. And then, and, I mean, and I know, I, I know, I know the picture of him. On the mont on the boat there was was disappeared. That's the big smoking gun. Disappeared. But, but again, I, it's it is what it is. Either way, he's not alive today. So oh no, we kidding? No. Um, I think too, like the one thing I really hope, and I think we've seen him in the series already. I think he was the guy who questioned Doctor Mud. Um, was Doherty the Canadian? I think that uh, was. It probably was. Yep, yeah, and I, I, you know. He was a he was a fairly prominent character in Killing Lincoln, um, and that's buried in too. Arlington Cemetery. And, w- and that reminds me, we'll see how these people portray the 16th New York, the Lincoln's Avengers, yeah. and how they portray Boston Corbin. Right? Yeah, because if, if they portray him, which he was, some kind of lunatic yeah. religion in the head, and this is a guy who cut his own junk off. Yeah, you know, castrated when, himself. Right. Uh, if they turn him into some sort of, I'm going to save the country. If they do that, then it's like, but, but he's, you know. I but think Doherty, Doherty was I, pretty pissed off at him that he, you know, because Doherty was the leader of that. And he was kind of telling Corbett, like, um, like, let's not get Well, there was a do. Doherty, don't forget, there was, there was some bucks involved with this. Oh, I mean, yeah. Was there, that Doherty that was being propositioned? There, there's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. There's a, and it was going to split us, right? Oh, um, so that was Doherty he was talking to? That, that had, yeah, it was Doherty about Doherty. So, so there's a $100,000 bond in his head to get this guy. Yep. Right? So they're going to catch this freaking guy alive. You catch him. I'm going to put you in charge of yep. going to chase him. And we're going to, but that's again one of the theories. But no one, it's, a, it's yep. not factual. But the miniseries talks about that. You know, that they're going to, they're going to basically take this money. We're going to put you in charge. We're going to split the money, but get him. And, they, I mean, if that was a real hundred thousand dollar, ten dollar, a lot of money, right? That's a oh, lot that's of money. A lot of money, especially um, back then, obviously. So, a lot so, of money um, now. so when they killed him, it kind of screwed the pooch a little bit. Yeah. For a lot of these guys. Oh, right. Because I thought it was like captured dead or alive. Well, I mean, if you, if you take a peek about it, 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 they really wanted him alive. They really did. Yeah. Because, um, because they, again, if you catch him, Maybe, maybe there was a conspiracy. Maybe there was a Confederate plot. Maybe how you're not going to find out. Dead men tell no tales, right? Yeah, learned that in a pirate movie. The, I the, learned that the, in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Yeah, and so and that, and that that's that's always going to be be what it is. So there's a lot of intrigue with this. That's what's cool about the uh, about the whole um, about this whole series is it's really going to sit there and, and talk about how it goes. You know, did Lafayette Baker have a plot with 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 Doherty to split the money? Right. Mm. He's the one who's played by Patton Oswalt. That's Lafayette yeah. Baker. So is Baker going to be, is that story true? And if you remember in one of the episodes, there's only been two, I think it's the second one, where they're kind of like, hey, not for nothing, but we can split this. They could have yeah. seen about that. Um, I was wondering if that was Doherty he was talking to, but I think it was Doherty who went to Dr. Mudd's house and talked to him because that would have been the 16th at that point. Yeah, it is, it, there's a lot, a lot of guys, but they wouldn't have got him at the house, though. He went, he went down to Bryant Town. Which is yeah. a town just a little bit further south. That's right. They question him down there. They got him right. So he escapes when he finds out the the, the uh, cavalry's coming through here. So he goes to Bryantown to do some shopping, yeah. right? 
<laughs> and so he, <laughs> and so they come back and, and, and you know, they talk about the troops being there. But yeah, that, that's what's cool about this. So many different angles that they can go with this. But 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 at the end of the day, read Manhunt. If you really yeah. if, if you really want a history to understand who John Wilkes Booth was, you read two books. You read American Brutus and you read Asia Booth Clark's diary, right? Yeah. You read those two. But if you want to read about the actual retreat or the escape, I mean, read Manhunt by Swanson. Yeah. And it's kind of a shame that it's not 100% factually true. And I get that. But it's still cool, though. I'm still going to watch it. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to nerd out over it because it was the series I always wanted as a kid. I've been in, like, I got, like, the Lincoln assassination was my gateway into the Civil War when I was six years old. Um, Like, this is something I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool kind of thing, right? Like, you know, so I'm I'm really enjoying it. Historical inaccuracies and all. Lack of Stanton's beard. All of that, I'm enjoying it. The, yeah, the beer, the beer thing's a thing that that's kind of fascinating as far as how, how people. But again, I, I, if you study the Civil War, you don't really study the assassination. Look, the reality is, of course, he, he had that big long beard, that good hero beard. Yeah. If for whatever reason, you know, that was a Tobias, was it Menzies or hell's yeah, to- yeah, Tobias, which I never heard before until this thing, to be totally honest. Um, but he, um, he doesn't have a beard, and he's he's more of a of a Perry Mason type who done it, who's a field agent, which is not yeah. the most accurate thing in the world. But again, but her, who cares? They're rolling characters in together. I think you know that's what they're doing with it. Mm. Like they're putting two characters into one person to cover, so they don't have to have a bunch of people, right? I mean, I guess so. I mean, these are major characters, though. I mean, Stance oh, I know, was- I know. That's but I mean, that's something that that happens sometimes. You'll get like two characters rolled into one, and they'll give it one per obviously one person's name yeah well yeah that, that's exactly I mean, that, that's something they're gonna do they, they have to keep it under budget they have to keep this i mean this is a yeah. mini serious thing this is this is not a, a, a big big you know movie yeah. thing but again i i think people don't study a lot of the actual retreat um of, of him i say retreat but i mean escape i keep thinking freaking me but but there's there's not a lot of, of stuff that studies that I mean, and if and if you happen to find yourself in Virginia by Fredericksburg, right? You can and you can go and you can pretty much run the same retreat. And there is um, the Surratt Society, which I don't think exists anymore. I'm a member of it, but I haven't got a newsletter for them in a while. Um, you can sign up for a booth retreat, uh, escape tour. I mean, yeah. And, and Dave you start, Taylor used to lead them, right? And it's really cool because you start at at, at Surrattsville and you work your way to the mud house. You go to the pine thickets. You go through Zakaya Swamp. You end up right down. You go through, you know, um, Port Tobacco. You end up going across the river. You end up at Garrett Farm. But you can follow the footsteps, and there are Civil War trail signs. Mm-hmm. that are out there the pine thicket is not really in the site where the pine thicket was because it's yeah. mostly developed now um but you can still go out there in the woods you can sit there in the woods or in the, you know where the pine thicket probably was in the area but the, the site where booth was no one knows exactly where he was but you can still do it and it, mm-hmm. I, we did it one day a couple of years ago with some friends of mine we, we did the whole escape tour and it takes a whole day it takes the whole day to do it but it is cool it is definitely it worth, is fun if, yeah if you're into this part of history um then definitely do it I think like I hope this gets more people into the assassination because I think it is an important part of this of studying the Civil War. It's also something that, you know, and you know, I encountered this when I did an Abraham Lincoln podcast that like, you know, sometimes we dismiss the the conspirators and especially Booth as just pe- appearing on April 14th and then kind of disappearing from history. And that's not the way it was. These are people that had lives. I'm not like no way I'm condoning what they did, but you need to understand why it happened. You need to study them as people, especially Booth, to understand what happened. Um, To dismiss them all is not like it's not really studying history. Um, It and it's worth studying. That's why you know American Brutus is is worth reading. And I hope it kind of spurs this interest in not just the Lincoln assassination, but the manhunt for Booth and the trial that happened. Because 2025 is the 160th anniversary of all this. And for that, I want to see more than just Lincoln get shot at Ford's Theater. I would like to see, you know, let's talk about the manhunt for Booth and what happened there. And let's talk about the trial and kind of how botched that trial was. Um, 
you know, and who was involved in all that, because that is, that is really important. It is an area that doesn't get studied. And like I said, next year is uh, the it, 160 it, it, of it, of it. And it needs, it. it's something that, you know, like don't just stop at Lincoln getting shot at Ford's theater, study it beyond that. Cause it, it, yeah. it really will give you an understanding too of reconstruction and you know, how bad things were about to become as well. No, it's, 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 it's really, mm -hmm. it's really something to look at because it's just, it's just, again, a lot of the, a lot of the civil war sweet spot to study comes after Appomattox. It really does. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, that is, that's a big part of it, you know, but I'm saying you have to go back that you like, you can't just stop at April 15th when Lincoln dies, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. You, you have to go and like, look at, and, and also study, you know, um, oh, Ambrose, a new person on here. Hi, Ambrose said your podcast made me get into the battle of Chickamauga, which led oh. me to find out about the eighth can Kansas and go out to a pilgrimage to vineyard field and up to Madison, Wisconsin to see hands. Hegg's statue. Wow. That's very cool. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, that chicken bar is your neck of the woods. Yeah, that, no, your, I mean, I'm, I'm totally Western theater. I mean, I love Eastern theater, but I'm totally Western theater. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty no, cool. that's that's really cool. Yeah, no, Chickamauga is a great study. A no, it, it is. Chickamauga is, we we'll talk a little bit about this too, is it, it talks a lot about some of the intrigue with that. And we talked a lot before about the 18th being the first day, right? Yeah. About the, the, the bridges and how Minty and Wilder, how important they were to, to stop in Bragg's role and, and how it really helped set up. I realize obviously the Confederates won that battle, but you know, it helped set up that escape eventually to Chattanooga, which led yeah. to the siege of Chattanooga, which led, of course, to the Tullahoma campaign, which led to, you know, to, uh, there's so much stuff that comes out of that. So there are certain, there are certain points you can study that lead out of points. It's like one of those, um, those Russian nesting doll things, right? It just yeah. Well, Tullahoma is, you know, we talked about Tullahoma. Tullahoma is where, um, you know, Wilder and his brigade become the lightning brigade because, right. you know, Rosecrans is like, I want mounted infantry. And it's Stanton who writes him back, and I think Halleck as well, basically saying mounted infantry is useless. And Wilder has this like hold my beer moment and goes out on that raid. No one gets killed on the raid um, right. and comes back. And, you know, prior to that, they wanted to use the Spencer repeaters and the War Department wouldn't pay for them because they were like, these suck. So Wilder's like, fine, I'll finance them myself, finances them all for his his men. They all get them. And then the War Department eventually pays them back. But without that, you don't have him fighting on September 18th, you know, and along with Minty, you don't have them fighting there. And I, you know, they did save the army in many respects, because without that, I, you know, Bragg's plan was really good. Like, and he, you know, Minty and Wilder force him to basically go back on the night of September 18th, early morning hours of the 19th and be like, well, what am I going to do now? I got to change my whole plan. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the, that, that's the, that's the whole thing is how, how one thing leads to another, which is pretty, which is pretty cool though. And the more, the more content, um, and the more you study that, the more you gives yeah. you a full view of this whole thing. And it's not that all the people who focus on certain aspects of People like, some people like Western theaters, feel like Eastern theater. Some people like the politics. Some people like the battle. Some people like the people. Some people like generals versus whatever. But there's so much. There's so much. It's amazing when you think about the fact that a four year war can generate so much as far as just as far as stuff to try. And I, I know this not just it's it's it's, it's there's a lead up to it. There's a post to still today, yeah. but it's fascinating how much, um, you know, conversation and how much study that something like this causes. Yeah. Right? And the passion that people put into it, um, inspired said, um, is always all of the content. So thank you for that. He's, uh, they said, I would love to hear more on the raids and the 1865 muster out great podcast. You bring it. And thank you very much. And I think oh, we've talked about Appomattox, um, and I think we did talk about the mustering out, but not in, I'd like to go back and revisit that at some point, talk about how they mustered out the soldiers after that. I'd love to do an episode about the grand review because that was like a, yeah, we could do it. the, the, um, the politics with the grand review are really something. No, I mean, again, there's, there's a, there's a lot of that. And, and you know, the, the grand review, we, we talked a lot about how, that's really where the politics turns into where it kinds of turns into 
who gets credit for what, yeah. right? And you end up with that measuring contest with a lot of people that, that comes out of this stuff. And then you start to see a lot of the Confederates, guys like Mosby, guys like Longstreet, right? Especially Longstreet, mm-hmm. who kind of realize, okay, the game is over. What we need, what do we need to do now to, to bring the country back together again? You know, good game, good game. We tried yeah. versus some of the others who just Super never early. had it. And that and we saw this a million times. That's where Lee doesn't get enough credit. Yeah. You know, he he would never support Grant. Don't get me wrong. He was never going to do that. But his focus was keeping people in Virginia to help keep home rule of Virginia to be part of the country again. And he dies relatively too soon. He dies a couple of years after the war. So you don't really know exactly what was going to go on from that. Yeah. But a lot of the people, a lot of folks, Beauregard, people like that, who, who came, went to call on him on Franklin Street over there in Richmond who wanted to leave the country is saying, no, we, we, we mm. need our sons more than ever now. It's a phrase you always used. Yeah. We, we'd be back together again. And then you have people like John Mark Gordon who tried, who wanted to help reconcile different ways, which yes. is kind of, we're going to sit there. We want Georgia to have a democratic government again. We want to get rid of these military districts again. How do we do that? We have to play yeah. the game until we can buy time to we get our own elections and we can vote on who we want again. Yeah. But again, that's 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 part of that's reconstruction. And that and exactly. that's speaking speaking of Booth again, that's really where he screwed the country up. Was killing Lincoln really denied the country the ability to really heal? It's like yeah. breaking your like breaking your leg, right? And instead of going to a doctor, you just let it heal on its own, and it doesn't heal right, and it bothers you for the rest of your life, right? That's kind of what what the assassination did to the country. We're still feeling it today. Exactly. Yeah, and some people are saying. Um... So Jim mentions he's finding himself more drawn to the politics of the pre pre war period, specifically the Compromise of eighteen fifty. And Miranda says something, and I agree with this. I would love to see a retrial of Mary Surratt with all the information we have now. I'd love to see that too. There's a book called The Judicial Murder of Mary Surratt, which talks about all the testimony. And our friend Kate Larson thinks thinks it's whatever she doesn't like it, but that talks about it. And if they if they I'll tell you right now if they retried her under a civilian court she would have been she would not have been hanged yeah. and we know this because her son john was tried under, under uh, in 1868 right under a civilian court and he was a hung jury same witnesses same evidence same people brought the whole band back together again and they didn't convict him so there's no way they would have convicted mary there's no yeah. way they would have i've often thought of giving the books to um the lawyers in my family there's a couple of them my, my cousin is a lawyer and so is my father. And I've often thought of giving them, here's the evidence. Let me know what you think kind of thing and pick it apart. I mean, that, that, but you know what you're doing though? You're doing, you're being guilty of what a lot of people do now is using today's mentality oh, I know. versus yesterday's I know. politics. And then that's I did the do problem. that in a project though for my History of Russia course. I had to evaluate documents about the murder of uh, Catherine the Great's husband. <laughs> From yeah. like my point of view, but as like basically look at these primary source documents from his murder that people that wrote accounts about it. And I had to like, well, who's guilty? And well, there's, there's, there's a lot, like we say a million times, you read as much as much content as yeah. you can, you, you come up with your own opinion, and but always keep an open mind. And I think one of yeah. the biggest challenges people have in the history world, we see it, is people learn what they learn and they keep their mind closed and instead of opening their mind up a little bit to maybe learn more, to help expand their knowledge, which maybe challenge what they think a little bit, they close that wall and attack the people who disagree with them. And we see it. And we see people who were younger and they should be doing this. But that's 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 history. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, we should get ready to jump off here because we have um, St. Patrick's Day. Right, because nine minutes from to... now, the bar opens, Mary, nine minutes. Actually, uh, a few of them opened at eight o'clock this morning because they were having brunch. Oh, well, now you tell me. Anyway, yeah, all right. New World so, Tavern opened at like eight this morning. Welcome to Boston. But anyway, so Tavern all right. Wars. Yeah. all right. So anyway, so we are going to jump off. So um, we are going to be doing our episode on on Patrick Claiborne. Yeah, I believe we're recording it Friday. We right? are. Yep, Friday. Yep. Okay, so record Friday. So we'll do that. That'll drop, and then we'll schedule this thing again for next weekend, probably Saturday. I yep. Think, right? Yep. I think so. We'll see. You. So everybody, so everybody out there, have a healthy and safe St. Patrick's Day. Be smart. Okay, be smart. Don't be stupid, especially people in the Northeast. Be smart about it. Yeah, and thanks uh, for joining us for this. You guys are awesome to hang out with. We love all your comments and your questions and the discussion that this generates. We couldn't do this. We wouldn't be able to do this Facebook Live unless people commented. I love reading what people think. We talk on this all the time, just us. Oh, yeah. This is our typical conversation. (laughs) It's about this. Yeah, but but it's fun. But again, we appreciate it. So definitely uh, 
watch watch the Lincoln thing. If you have Apple TV, give it a shot. See what you think about it. And um, yeah, let us know. Let us know. And we'll definitely plan on uh, some more fun things down the road. All right. So let me jump off. Somebody, like I said, have a safe St. Patty's Day. Um, Uber is your friend. Don't be stupid yeah. on this weekend. Trust me. It's not, not, not a good idea. Um, and off we go. All right, guys. Enjoy. Happy St. Patrick's.